Welcome to the latest episode of Guaranteed Audio, the number of which I don't have committed to memory. My name is Kevin James, and I am joined by a bunch of my friends tonight. There's quite a few hosts, so pay attention, or it will be very confusing to listen to the show that follows. Who is sitting to uh, my left? Oh, Dan Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> and next to Dan is? Max Pacheco. And next to Max is? Corey Tilton. And last is? Neil Cesariga. Whoa! We are here. Without our good friend Ryan Murphy, because he's busy with work. He's and- dead! No! no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a good start. Yeah, we were going to do an episode of a live stream, but decided that was too much work. So we're going to do an audio show. You're lucky. Yeah. That you get this. <laughs> uh, yeah, the theme of today's episode is going to be uh, us getting into the machinations, the weeds, if you will, of how we do our live productions, because we kind of just started doing those. We didn't really formally announce that we were going to do them in any way. We didn't have like a Patreon post. We just sort of did it three, four, five months ago. I don't even know at this point. It's something we've been kind of like talking about for a long time, working our way up to. We did the Halloween stream last year. Yeah. And then we didn't do anything for a while. And then we, <laughs> uh, well, we just needed, we needed a good concept that we could do regularly, repeatedly. Oh, we'll get into that later on Oh, sure. because there's, there's, there's criteria with the show and there's a, there's a format to make sure it's as long as possible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can listen to every episode of this show at guaranteedaudio.com. Yeah. All right. Moving on to the first segment of our show, which is Max, what do you think it is? Uh, talking about stuff we saw correct Ah. which we call media current which is a segment on every episode of guaranteed audio where we all share show and tell style a movie a book you know a piece of media we've recently imbibed uh and yeah it gives everyone at the table a little bit of anxiety because i don't think any of us thought of anything to share does anyone want to start I'll sure. start. Oh, Max. All right, I you guess, go. yeah. Um, I recently listened to the audiobook of A Dark and Drowning Tide. Uh, it is not my usual sort of thing. It is a fantasy uh, sapphic romance. What's that mean? Uh, it means two ladies like oh, each other. Like that's, I've never heard sense. <laughs> I never heard sapphic before. Sapphic? I don't. It was Ooh, on like the culture of it. Yeah. <laughs> Say, does that mean like against the will of God? Or <laughs> In defiance of God's will, two women love I each other. It's, isn't Sapphos some sort of god? It's like a Roman or Greek god. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. So it's a god's will. Yeah. Uh, but I was. I really got into it. I only uh, checked it out because my buddy uh, did the cover for it. You know, which is a great reason to read a book by its cover, Mm -hmm. especially an audio book that you're not actually holding, but you just see the cover art on your phone. Sure. Um, And yeah, it was just like one of those, hey, I'll, you know, check something out that's outside of my wheelhouse and I really got into it. So sick. Where can people find it? Everywhere. You can get at the library. You can get off of Amazon, a dark and drowning tide, a dark and drowning tide. Yes. Who's going next? Neil, because he said. Me, oh, because I looked excited to talk about something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. The other night, um, we had our friends, friends of the show, uh, Betty and Jordan, uh, over, and we um, started the night early enough to watch two movies. Whoa. Yeah. Our first movie, uh, just kind of picked at random off Amazon Prime, was a movie none of us had seen, but looked promising. And that was Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Hell yeah, Demon Knight. I watched Demon Knight this summer with friend of the show, Craig Shannon. Yeah. I like that movie. I like Craig. No, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Moving on. (laughs) uh, No, that movie is uh, underrated. uh, Great cast, as you pointed out. It's got, let's see, um, (laughs) William Sadler. Yeah. Billy Zane. Billy. Okay. Billy Zane in like a breakout performance. Apparently it's the reason he got the role in Titanic. Yep. He's okay, just, so uh, that was going to be my question. Is this an older movie or this is a newer Tales Wait, Dan, you've never seen Tales from the Crypt Demon Knight? No, I've not. Shit, we could watch it tonight, Neil. I know. It we, was just kind of a... Well, like, hey, just, just a little information the, for the audience okay. at home. We're going to watch a movie after this podcast, mm-hmm. and talking about this movie is going to bum me out because sorry. it's a really fun movie. It is. I, I it, It's a mid-90s movie that feels like it's just like made by people who are stuck in the 80s, but in a good way. In the best way. They're not trying to in 
insert a bunch of uh, 90s ishness to it. It just feels like an old Tales from the Crypt thing. You it, know? It, it got Dick Miller. Yes. Dick Miller. Hey, all right. Um, Jesus all right. Christ. Jesus Christ makes a cameo or two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this movie has a great bullshit version of Christianity. It's got, a, as I recall it, a Super Nintendo uh, transposition. William of Sadler literally like is giving exposition about like in the beginning there was darkness and there were demons everywhere and God created seven keys and scattered them across the universe. He sounds like, you know, Kirk Frog talking or old Mac talking. <laughs> and now Mega Man has yeah. to go find yeah. them. <laughs> um, really great. Um, uh, okay, Billy Zane, amazing. Uh, CCH Pounder is yep. in there. Jada Pinkett. Yep. Hmm. Um, who's the who's the guy uh, who plays the USPS driver? He's the voice of Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Oh, I forget his name, but I I saw him. I was like, oh, holy shit, that's the guy who I don't like to think of being Roger Rabbit. Yeah. Uh, Charles <laughs> Fleischer. Charles Fleischer. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bu- 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 bu. It's you know not a big cast, uh, but there's really cool just demon monsters and like it's kind of a bottle movie. It's um, it's sort of like a zombie hold up movie. I legitimately thought I was putting on an anthology movie because it opens with like a framing device of the Crypt Keeper, you know, and he's like, I have been directing movies lately. And he's like, would you like to watch some clips from movies? Like, this is the framing device. Hmm. And they do like that really weird uh, shot of the Crypt Keeper at the beginning where they put his head on artificially to a body. It looks really bad. It There's looks like, really bad. Finally, the Crypt Keeper, we're going to see him walk. <laughs> this is what gets, yeah, but this is what gets me is Robert Zemeckis was heavily involved with Tales from the Crypt, the show, mm-hmm. to the point where when they made uh, Death Becomes Her, that was originally supposed to be a Tales from the Crypt movie. Oh, Death okay. Becomes Her comes out before this movie and has those incredible uh, match, I guess you call it motion tracking effects with Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn mm-hmm. doing, um, you know, they had, they, they did so many takes of just robotically trying to walk at the right rhythm to make certain effects line up properly with their bodies. Yeah. And then you watch this movie <laughs> and they do that exact effect in the opening two minutes and, and it looks like just, shit. It looks really bad. I also yeah. just watched Casper recently and that has the same thing with uh, uh, Father Sarducci at the beginning and he gets his head twisted around. Yep. And it just looks so weird. <laughs> that the Crypt Keeper's in that movie too. That's right. Yeah. Huh? He's, yeah, the Crypt Keeper's in a scene with Rodney Dangerfield, Mel Gibson, Clint Eastwood, and Bill Pullman. All at the same time. Oh, is that when Bill he's, Pullman goes like drink his sorrows away? To no, a he's like no? looking in the mirror and the house is haunted and it makes him turn into different faces. Casper, oh. 1995's Casper is secretly like a family guy movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, there's so much crap in the first, especially the first half an hour of that movie. Like the cast of that movie just keeps knocking you on your ass. Like, why are you here? Yeah. Why did you show up? Why is Clint Eastwood in that movie? It's part of the Ghostbusters universe. Yeah. yeah. Canonically. Yeah. My sister and I booed that movie uh, <laughs> oh. when we were six oh, and seven years no. old. We were in the theater and Ray came out and he said, who are you going to call? Someone else. And my sister and I booed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and then, all, right, all right. So um, Demon Knight. Demon Knight. Uh, good movie. Recommend. And then um, Billy Zane. He's hot. So we were thinking like, oh, what's another horror movie with like. Uh, a weird hot guy. We're like, oh, Clancy Brown is in Pet Cemetery 2. Yeah. He's the good part of that movie. Wait, is, is Clancy Brown the hot guy in this scenario? Oh, yeah. Okay. Clancy <laughs> Brown's pretty damn good looking. He's a, he's a rugged, handsome Peak, Yeah. All right, if you like a bad boy, Clancy yeah, Brown. Yeah, Clancy <laughs> Brown. Yeah, uh, Pet Cemetery 2 is not a good movie. It's a problematic movie. It's got um, uh, Furlong, Eddie Furlong in it. Yep. And um, that's got the motor. That's got the. The mo- bike tire, bike tire death. to the yeah. face. That's the yeah. cool part. Yeah, um, it's 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 whatever. But it's um, Clancy Brown is <laughs> intensely funny and, mm-hmm. and and a bizarre guy. I just watched a Clancy Brown movie right before Halloween. It's a new movie uh-huh. that he like put some money into. I believe hmm. it's called uh, Mortuary Tales. Ooh. That is an anthology horror movie, and he's the crypt keeper of that movie. Oh, no way. And he's awesome in it. Holy shit, I got Spo- Surprise, out. Clancy Brown's really good in the movie. <laughs> we all love Clancy in this house. Um, Except Dan, apparently, <laughs> who questioned his hotness. I said he was ruggedly handsome. <laughs> With a question mark. <laughs> you had a tone. <laughs> Sorry. Well, all right, when we when when you say I? Clancy uh, Brown, who it's the first role that, that pops to your mind? Lex Luthor. Yeah, yeah Lex Luthor. Okay, yeah, it's and all the Live voice. action would be, yeah. Lost. Billy Zane. Yeah, Billy Zane. Billy Zane. yeah that, that was the connection I believe we made. Like, <laughs> right. Billy Zane even sounds like Clancy Brown. And, you and, and you yeah. and Ming hung out with me like like the that day probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, all right, and then our final, just rounding off the night, like we didn't have it in us to watch a, a yet another movie, but we're like, hey, you know, 
Edward Furlong played the crow. Have you ever seen the crow movie that he was in? It's the fourth one. It's like it came out 2005 and we watched a bit of it. It's like a terrible like Tarantino wannabe like Western thing. And he is uh, extremely miscast as the crow. And uh, <laughs> what, what's Edward Furlong's second best movie? Detroit Rock City. Oh, oh I haven't yeah, seen it. not Pecker. Seen Never seen it. Sorry. Never seen Pecker. Brain scan. I was going to say, is it, is it brain scan? <laughs> That's a movie Clancy Brown probably could have been in. We, yeah, that could have used Clancy Brown playing his principal or something. You know? <laughs> Who wants to go next? I'll go. Um, so I watched, uh, I'm going to say last month, but it was only a couple weeks ago. Uh, I watched the TV glow. I saw the TV glow. I saw the TV glow. I saw the TV glow. Yes. I knew nothing about it besides that it was billed as a horror movie. And I was expecting... I didn't see any trailers. I didn't speak with anyone about it, but I was expecting something along the lines of like Candle Cove, uh, mm -hmm. Straub, where it's, if you're unfamiliar and you're one of the listeners of this show, it's probably before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> 2009, little internet story by writer Chris Straub um, about people on a forum remembering a TV show they watched as a kid that ended up being something a little bit more horrifying uh, than they initially remembered. So that's what I was expecting. Uh, when I got into it, it was a lot less of that. It was more of a drama with horror elements, there's I'd like, say. There's like two dollops of that. Yeah, like there's kind two of the little act, scenes. And then once and the bridge to the f the final. Finale, yeah, yeah. That's when it kind of gets into that sort of realm. But it was still, a, you know, a, a fairly decent movie. Um, you know, got into it. I, I, I classified it as a trauma drama. <laughs> uh, with nothing wrong with that yeah, you know, yeah it's a lot more about you know finding who you are accepting who you are stop trying to tell yourself a lie it's it's a trans allegory film yeah um but i think there's messaging in it that can you know be outside of that um but i enjoyed it for what it was um thought it could have maybe leaned a little bit more into that analog horror you know tv show vibe uh justice smith still kind of a plank of a wood actor um, I've seen him in three things and only enjoyed him in one. And that's because there was an ensemble cast, I think, lifting him up. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. He's really yeah. good in that. He wasn't very good in that Jurassic World movie. I forgot he was in that movie. I've seen four <laughs> movies with Justice Smith. He was in a <laughs> horror video game. It was, um, from the, the oh, was it Until Dawn? N not, it's not Until Dawn, but I think it's The Quarry, maybe. Oh, it's from the same studio. Super yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. in that. But like, by like his third scene in that, I was like, is something like wrong with my video game because <laughs> his face wasn't moving but everyone no, else that's is, just justice that's kind of how he that's act. just how he does it i think he worked in i saw the tv glow it doesn't do any one thing particularly well but it's ambitious and experimental enough mm -hmm. script wise that i kind of am like oh it's like a must-see movie i think it's one of the best movies i saw this year for sure yeah. um i think one element i liked which kind of harkened back to older horror films like b movie 80 films is that scene in the bar where they have the band play and this essentially, you know, yep. kind of, oh, we have a band. Let's film the band. We'll film like a it, music it's video. It's like a scene it right out of Silent Hill 2. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, or Twin Peaks, I guess, is the better analog there. Um, I thought that was fun. I thought that was like a good nod to those types of movies. But otherwise, yeah, I think it's something you should watch. Um, I enjoyed it enough. But if you're looking for a horror film, definitely not that. <laughs> I had an extremely weird experience leaving that movie. I saw it at the Coolidge with my friend Nora, mm -hmm. and without spoiling anything, uh, it ends at a business that has a very particular uniform. It's a very, very particular uniform, right? And as was alluded to, there are themes of like, what is real? Who am I? And all of this stuff. And as we're leaving our screening at the Coolidge like it wasn't like uh like a premiere of it or anything it had been out for like a few weeks it was in one of their smaller screening rooms because it was like on its way out as we're leaving we cross pat we cross paths with someone who's going into the theater wearing that exact uniform that they wear at the business weird yeah and i like looked it up later like you know <laughs> is this like a promo item is this like a halloween costume like do they do this to mess with people and I never got an answer as to what the deal was. Max, you're living in the simulation. I, oh, that I movie guess. was just for you. I guess. Yeah. Corey, you've you seen know, the movie too, right? Someone might have been yeah. cosplaying going to see their favorite movie. But the, no, but the movie was letting out is the thing. So why? And oh, they were maybe going to the next screening? I don't know. Really early though. They <laughs> were cosplaying. Like two weeks after it's like. You said the Coolidge. Right? Yeah. yeah and there's it, no reserved seats. I saw it at the Coolidge too. So you got to get there early to get good seats. Mm. <laughs> I guess. Of course, what were your thoughts on I saw the TV glow kind of like Dan's? Like you thought, I, yeah, I think I 
and maybe <laughs> sold you a bill of goods that it was like a horror movie by accident. For some, yeah, for some reason I thought you had said it. I think you just said it was really good and I took that from you as being like, it's a really good horror movie. Sure. Um, it is a horror movie, sort of, and it is really good. <laughs> but the Venn diagram is not quite a circle there. <laughs> yeah, so my, my girlfriend and I, we wanted, it was around Halloween and she wanted to watch something, a good horror movie. And I was like, Kevin just recommended this horror movie or what I thought was a horror movie and let's watch it. We probably got like three quarters of the way through and she's like, this isn't a horror movie. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, so, yeah, based on like the the thumbnails and stuff, I thought it was going to be more of a, I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Void. Yeah. Yep. Um, I thought it was going to be more <laughs> like that. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I could see I why saw you the were TV like waiting for it to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, when's like going to be goo and some like, I don't know, like. <laughs> HP Lovecraft stuff going on and it that never happened. So I don't think I need to rewatch it because I, I feel like I, I mean, didn't. without spoilers, there was goo in that movie. Very briefly. Very yeah. briefly. Yeah. And early on, but yeah, it's not really returned <laughs> to in that way. Corey, while you're thinking of your media current, um, yeah. speaking of I Saw the TV Glow, Connor O'Malley is in I Saw the TV Glow briefly. He plays a small role in that movie. And uh, my media current, I was trying to figure out what to do. I thought about maybe talking about the new Silent Hill 2 remake, but uh, let's talk about Rap World. Uh, Corey's the only <laughs> person here who's seen it. It's a 50 minute movie. It's available now on YouTube. Connor O'Malley is one of the stars of this movie. Mm -hmm. How best to describe Rap World, Corey? Uh, if you are in our age demographic, um, or yeah, anywhere from, <laughs> you know, 28 to 40. 45 probably um the in and you are a, a suburban male there is a good chance that you have uh high eight and or vhs footage that looks just like this somewhere at your parents house yes hiding um it's it's shot like, almost like a found footage comedy yeah. film and it's about one I guess you'd call it fateful night. One night in Western Pennsylvania suburb, sub is it suburbs. Is it supposed to be Western Pennsylvania? I think so. It's, so, it's so spot on CKY. It, it, it's about it's about three <laughs> just dickheads uh, yeah. who uh, yeah. who uh, decided this is the night they're finally going to record their rap EP. And um, one of them has a camera and brings it around documenting the night. There's like five to 10 minutes spent just on eating McDonald's. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm underselling it. Um, the director, uh, Connor O'Malley shares directing credit with Danny Sharar. Sharar. Yeah. It's got a bit of, yeah, like that jackass um, vibe to it, that CKY vibe to it. To your point, Corey, I thought the movie took place in like 2002, but it takes place in 2009. But the fidelity of the camera makes you think it's earlier because these guys just have a cheap ass camera. It, yeah, it looks identical to stuff that I, I I'm sure you as yeah. well, but it looks identical to stuff that me and my friends filmed running around Taco Bell parking lots when in the middle of the night during like summer vacation when we were 13, 14 years old, like 2001, that's 2002. Like, that's like a big line in the movie. I'm going to butcher it, but uh, someone looks at the camera and says, you know what, man, some of the best memories of my life are in supermarket parking lots yeah. and it's played completely straight it's not, you know it's like one of the few lines you're not supposed to laugh at and that's when the whole movie clicked to me I'm like okay this is this is pretty great but yeah. it's um it is just i'm not going to spoil whether or not they record the album <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the will they won't they of the whole thing <laughs> yeah it, it definitely romanticizes i mean the bed of comedy is very very heavy there's mm -hmm. an earnestness that Corey and i appreciate about the movie that's not really the primary ingredient how do i describe it you were mentioning Corey, how like you most of us at this table probably had video cameras. We re recorded random stuff around this time. Yeah. And, you know, at that age, like when you're a teenager, early 20s, uh, at the turn of the century, you'd rewatch those tapes. You'd look at them as you captured them or edited them into like skate videos or your own rip off of CKY or Jackass. And this movie is the first time I've seen someone play into that as a medium, like yeah. the medium being yeah, the message exactly. of this movie is like, yeah. that's what this is. Every couple of years, there's like a gimmick horror movie. We're like, this horror movie is just a zoom call mm -hmm. or yeah. this horror movie is just a bunch of like iPhone video chats, you know, that kind of thing. This is a comedy film that tries to do that with the format of just suburban jackasses filming themselves driving around. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend it. It's 50 minutes. It's on YouTube. Rap World. What uh, what level is Connor O'Malley at? Because he is someone he, I think primarily known for being completely unhinged. He he does that a few times. Yeah. 
There's a whole scene in the He's movie. not wandering through the desert hallucinating covered in No, shit. it's no. more grounded. It's more grounded. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it this way. Like there's a scene early on in the movie where they realize one of their mothers is away for the weekend so they can hang at her house and like do whatever they want mm-hmm. and they sneak up into her bedroom. I think one of them said he was 28, 27. They go up into the mother's bedroom and they find her gun. She has like a like a like a small handgun she keeps under the bed for safety or whatever. And then for the next 3 minutes is just them like posing with the gun and like taking like polaroids and stuff of them walking through doors trying to look like cops and stuff like that but that's the level of humor we're at is like look at these dumbasses mm-hmm. like it's just observational yeah. dumb guy humor which I'm, I'm i'm very responsive to so yes yeah. rap world uh great movie came out recently premiered in new york a couple months ago but yeah it's free go watch it why not it's 50 yeah. minutes what else you got to do hmm. all right who's left <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it's me. Um, so a little bit different than everyone else. I went to a couple of concerts recently. Cool. Um, one of the ones that I'm going to talk about, I went to, it was a local concert for a local doom band that was releasing an album. Doom band? Doom, like doom metal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Slow, sludgy, like giant speaker cabinets and like sure, sure, sure. loud guitars and stuff like that. The band was called Glacier. They were great. But one of the openers for them was significantly more interesting to me for the night. I'd never heard of them before, but they were called Circus Trees. (laughs) Weird band name. But it was three siblings, two sisters and a brother. They were all like late teens, early 20s. Like none none of the three of them were just over the age of like 24, 25. Losers. And they were like the coolest weirdest most unique band i've seen live in a really really long time i talked to them for a while after the show because it was like it's like wow this is cool um it it was like like heavy stoner doom almost like glam rock with like lana del rey vocals over it cool Hmm. um drenched in reverb they had a really cool light show that like the singer sister had like programmed so they played to a click track and she programmed her own light show in her laptop to the click track to like MIDI out to all these lights that were going. Nice. Super cool. Um, new album that they released that I bought on vinyl was called, uh, what was it called? Uh, this makes me sad and I miss you. So circus it's like trees. circus trees. Very like, don't, don't listen to it if you're super sad and don't want to be even more sad because it's like it's very depressing music. I think they're they're from like northern mass slash like southern New Hampshire. It sounds like the type of music you like sit in the woods and just like I mean, yeah, it's the perfect part of the state. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, I love how abrupt your sound effect cutoffs are. Neil. <laughs> like if you play a sound effect that clearly gonna... is supposed to linger, then you're like, oh, it's over. Latch yeah, it off. It's just, <laughs> the joke's over. It's a glam rock. Did they like I've been to a couple metal shows before. I, I you know, I've seen people do face paints of skulls with the name Circus Trees where they like clowns. <laughs> no, I guess, I guess glam rock is not uh, shoegaze. Oh, okay. Shoegaze. Okay. So it's like lots of like drenched in reverb and like slow building into very heavy, big, loud, like one of the louder shows I've been to in a long time, which was nice for a change. Um, it was, I ha- I haven't seen a band with like legitimate guitar amps and cabinets in like a little bit. That's like kind of falling out of favor for like a lot of local bands and a lot of big bands too. Sure. Um, so it was just like a nice change of pace. I was one of those, I wasn't, a buddy of mine wanted me to go see this Glacier band. Again, Glacier was great. They were cool. Um, a buddy of mine is their barber, I guess. So he's like, Hey, let's go to the show. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I go to the show, but like this opener started playing. I'm like, yo, this is sick. And then I was like looking at my buddy. I'm like, this is sick. Right. And he's like, this is sick. And I'm like, okay, cool. I can't, I can't think of the last time I like discovered a new band at a live show. Like, yeah, that. ditto. Like ditto. Maybe in college, like Matt, the band I saw in yeah, college, yeah. you know I mean? In person. That's cool. I feel like I discover most of my music now through like algorithmic recommendations yeah, ditto, and friends going out to band you'd like, but like being at a show and the opener, like knocking you on your ass. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I got to go to more shows. I think because <laughs> that was, that was nice. It was nice to get out. Where'd you see him? It, it is a venue called deep cuts in Malden. I th- oh, never been. It's like yeah. a brewery or something, but they also I have went like to a, a small... children's birthday party there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was it, did, did you, was it in like little, like, I Maybe feel I'm like. I'm thinking of a di- different deep cut. No, the one I'm thinking of is in Medford. 
Maybe they're maybe it was Medford. Oh. <laughs> Malden, Medford. They're all kind they of like, like pin, do they other. have pinball machines? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Well, that was media current. I think I'm about to hit the right button. I gotta like make a reverse of that sound effect. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, like Ooh. a <laughs> Yeah. Electricity <laughs> being sucked back into heaven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should have had more caffeine. I had a large Jesus cold brew. going to power up. I had like a large cold brew two hours ago, and it's not doing anything for me. We're going to move on to our next segment, wherein we're going to talk about our live streaming adventures here at Guaranteed Video. Damn it, Neil. I was about to play the It'll Be Real Great sound. <laughs> uh, go for it. It'll be real great. Yeah. I'm <laughs> stepping on your sounds. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So we have a good posse of people here today to talk about this. We started doing live streams because, frankly, it was getting really hard to edit our to two hour long video podcast that we were trying to do. We wanted to do kind of Conan O'Brien style talk shows or recaps, like the usual commentary bullshit you see on YouTube. And I think the straw that broke the camel's back for me was when Ryan, Neil, and I did our Three hour recording wherein we reviewed Will Smith videos. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I, I, we called it, I think, Will Smith videos. <laughs> you um, did. I never got the joke there. It's a it, it's a play on words. Portmanteau oh, oh, oh. kind of. <laughs> you Smith never got videos. the joke. <laughs> Smith videos just doesn't work. I don't know. What to say. <laughs> it's a bad portmanteau. Well, yeah. Uh, but a yeah, we did. Portmanteau. That was mm. the editing process for that was just so long. We did everything we could to make it easier on ourselves. We broke it up into two pieces and the whole time we were thinking we just got to start editing live finally and uh of course with us being us and me being overly ambitious that being my achilles heel and greatest strength <laughs> i have made it as complicated as possible uh most people when they play video games on the internet take a single webcam they jump into obs they have like two buttons usually it's like a sound effect or two but not us there's usually like four cameras five cameras all running through like a black magic mixer above and beyond the necessities and requirements for video game streaming on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to be clear, like, you know, those are cameras you already had at your disposal. We sure. Didn't, sure. We but didn't buy but all of this. Stuff I'm not, I'm not saying, let me refer, let me, let me make it clear. I'm not saying it was a major fiscal expenditure to make the show work. It's just that I wanted to make our shows, even though they were alive, look pre-taped, um, which meant nailing the lighting, the one thing we really didn't get right out of the gate was the sound, which I guess we'll get into. But yeah, I, I personally knew that if we were going to do live shows, I didn't want to forfeit my favorite creative ingredient to our stuff, which is the fidelity. I like making our stuff look and sound good. And uh, we started workshopping from there, I guess, after the Will Smith videos thing. Dan, you, Neil, and I had talked maybe three years ago about doing a video game show. Right. Yeah, it was um, Frights in the Dream. So it, I know back in, during the pandemic times, the dark times, mm. we did a couple of test streams where you were playing Dreams and uh, Neil and I watched over it. Just to see how it would yeah, work. Just to see how it would work, yeah. And then uh, I think that sort of is part of the catalyst of that group chat that eventually spawned. I always felt that was more like you and Kevin's thing. Like, I, 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 I remember thinking like... Um, or at least Kevin, you were just like open to it being like, you know, I do stuff with you and Ryan and then, uh, me and Dan, I'm, I'm going to start streaming. That's how you kind of talked about it. Well, Dan and I were trying to figure out the shape of a video game related show. So I guess prior to wanting to do a live show, Dan and I were workshopping like just off and on for months. Like how would we do a video game show? Cause we would love to talk about video games on the internet. No one's done that yet. Oh. <laughs> um, and the first thing we thought about doing was kind of like a two man almost like a Siskel and Ebert style show where we talked exclusively about 3D platformers. Yep. Um, we wanted to call it Recollect and we wanted to do half an hour episodes where in every episode we covered two games. Like it would be like the first half of the episode we'd talk about like Jack and Daxter 2 and then the second half of the episode would be like hell out. Like Croc. Gex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that and we were going to do 10 of them. That was the idea. Like, we'll do 10 pre-taped. And then we we, we kind of came back to the video game show idea when we said we got to do something live. Ryan, Neil, and I kind of gave up on doing like the pre-taped review stuff. And the, the problem with doing pre-taped music video review shows <laughs> is uh, there's a lot of problems. Uh, the, yeah. the first one being copyright tagging and uh, content ID for the songs playing back in these music videos. So we thought, all right, well, we got to get away from music videos. Let's finally do a video game show. And how do we make it a guaranteed video video game show? And uh, 
yeah, everyone at this table have, have got involved at different points. Uh, Corey, you were involved early on. Corey, by the time I told you I want to do a live video game show in my garage, had I already told you it's going to be called Video Game Police? I don't think so. I think we were talking or, you know, you were telling me, you were like, I want to start doing some live stuff, some live streaming stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, let me know how I can help or not help or, you know, however involved you'd be willing to let me be. Um, It wasn't until a few months after you were like talking about it. I feel like you've been talking about it for like a few years now about wanting to do some live stuff. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it was it was pretty early on that you were like, Hey, it's going to be video games. And I was like, Hey, I don't know a lot of video games, but I'm down for whatever. That was the beauty of it is <laughs> for us. Uh, all of our close friends are, our, our, our little coven of podcasting slash movie making friends. We all have varying degrees of, <laughs> yeah, that's a sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> we all have varying degrees of video game familiarity and kind of like the bubbles we all occupy. Like Neil grew up a PC gamer. Um, like I was a Sega kid that became a PlayStation kid. Corey, you had like an N64 and then kind of got away from games. Yep. Mac, Max, you kind of dabble in everything. Yeah, I, I was hardcore about Super Nintendo. That was like my first real system. And like I You've, even yeah. had it through like N64. I was like, I'm not ch- changing. I got the perfect system. Also, you have streamed regularly and a lot more than we have, I think. Uh, I did at one point. Uh, oh, yeah. My youth. That's why I said <laughs> you have. Dan yeah. as well. Uh, Dan, you've Dan done does. a lot of charity streams uh, for... Uh, Extra life. Yep. Do uh, just finished up our tenth year of that. Uh, just a couple of weeks back now. Um, but yeah, video game streaming. And I think like my history was more same as you, Sega kid. But I didn't didn't pick a lane once Sega died. I just went okay, everything. Mm. So I just I still collect a lot of old stuff. I was just playing my old PS One this morning. But yeah, a lot of streaming with uh, group setups more than just solo ones. We had, we had talked about, there were times we all had gotten together at my place over the last two, three years to do podcasts or like talk show stuff, pre-taped stuff, where at the 11th hour, we almost decided to stream the process. I distinctly remember, Neil, you look at me going, do you want to just like stream this? Like, do you want to just do this live? Like, mm-hmm. do you want to like, and we came very close to doing it. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I want like thousands of prying eyes during this. And I think it was actually the Will Smith show. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, after that, you know, we cracked our knuckles and started theory crafting. Okay, how are we going to do a live show? It was either going to be say well, we might have caught the audio problems if we had done it live. Sure, <laughs> yep. Inside baseball, uh, we had a lot of audio problems on that Will Smith two part special that went three hours. Uh, the recording, anyway. But uh, we started talking about doing that. Uh, maybe we do a talk show. Maybe we do a video game show. And it quickly became well, the video game show is an anchor. It's a genre of stuff that we could apply our flavor to. I one night in my home started writing down names for a show. And the very first thing I came up with was the video game police because I thought it was a funny name and no one else had done it. I immediately texted a bunch of my friends with a screenshot of uh, Leonard Malton as the movie police in Gremlins Mm two and said, we should make a show called the video game police. And I was worried that people would push back on, I don't know, man. Like, do you, like, do you really? Did, did like, I not? I remember doing that. You did. A few, <laughs> a few people were like going all in on the police. But by the time you had gotten back to me, Dan, Neil was all green light about it. You were <laughs> like, yeah, the video game police. That's a kick ass name for a show. Let's get a bunch of stupid ass costumes. <laughs> I, I wasn't crazy about the costumes at first because I. It was the first image in my mind was like, oh, if we're all wearing cop costumes, this becomes a beautiful. <laughs> stupid it, thing. It becomes like, a little more goofy and oh, like yeah. acceptable. Yeah. It was like there, there was, there, there were, there were group texts and then there were private texts. And in the <laughs> private text, there was a lot of, you think, you think we can get Ryan to dress up like a judge? You think he'll do? Yeah. <laughs> you think he'll Don't do? tell him yet. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. No. No, no, Ryan, Ryan was a good sport and it was a perfect way to capture Ryan's X factor vibe. And like Ryan knows video games, but he, I think, you know, he, he, I don't think Ryan's ever been really into like video game streaming. Like I, I used to, I love watching Giant Bomb and Jeff Gerstmann and all those guys, uh, One Up and uh, the Garnet Lee crew, all those folks. And uh, I kind of knew what I had. I had my own idea of what video game content on the internet could be, and I think it's fallen by the wayside in a way because streaming has just become so democratized and easy to do. Everyone and their mother does it. 
uh, which is fine. Like I, 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 I do watch people stream stuff in a very lo-fi way at their desk still. Um, but I wanted to kind of bring it back to the, the giant bomb flavor of people hanging out. That was, that was kind of the vision in my head was like, it needs to have, we need a couch. We need a love seat. It mm. needs to be very informal, like hanging out in a living room, but with this police motif applied over it. I think it took three episodes for me to break on the costumes, right? Because I, I we were dressing up, but I wasn't. Oh, no, that, I, but, that no, took like five episodes, I think. <laughs> but I, well, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't keen on wearing like the cop outfit out of the gate because I frankly look the most like a cop, <laughs> and I also have knew I'd be running. I, I was getting like fifteen thousand steps in my garage every day for these shows, like mm-hmm. making sure everything worked. Because yeah, we had like five cameras, as many microphones. I have no idea how many lights we, every Mm. time we recorded the first three, four episodes, we were buying new HDMI and XLR cables, Mm. adapters, adapters, adapters. We were using the wrong type of mixer. We're still kind of using the wrong type of mixer (laughs) just to keep sanding off the edges and make the show better. But we hit the ground running. We didn't really do like a test show. (laughs) We just kind of, the first episode was the test episode. Why not? And that's why we don't number the episodes (laughs) because we don't want people to go, I got to watch episode. No, I mean, you don't need to watch it. Who could possibly care? Yeah. Yeah, Right. (laughs) Though the first episode, I think, still looks the best of the first, like, four or five of them. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we got our lighting game back on tech. But yeah, so that was the genesis of the idea. We wanted to make a guaranteed video-flavored video game show. It had to be live. For my money, it had to hit that high fidelity bar. And I think you all just, and Ryan, all just sort of, like, tolerate, like, Kevin's going to... He's going he's gonna <laughs> to do his Kevin thing. He's going to put way too much effort into lighting it. And I, I knew Corey had to be involved because Corey knows audio engineering... And I think you bring a very different ingredient to the table with the flavor on mic compared to the rest of us. Yeah. You're, you're the opposite of me in that you don't talk for hours on end uninterrupted, but also like, you know, when we said, okay, first episode, everyone pick a video game that's somewhat related to crime and you picked bio freaks because it's a crime against humanity. Is that the yeah. idea of crime yeah. against nature? Well, I, I I'm not going to go into explaining bio freaks, but <laughs> generally, yeah. Yeah. That was the genuine it was perfect. general idea. It was perfect. Cause like th- that was another thing too. And we've kind of gotten away from this initially the idea, the DNA of it was, Hey, let's stick to like post multimedia CD ROM pre internet connected video game console days. Let's really do like mm. the 1993 to like 2001 era of 3d hasn't quite been figured out yet, but look at all this space we have on optical media. We've kind of evolved it more into involving internet ephemera. Like mm-hmm. that, like, like the Austin powers episode. I thought that was a really good call. Just like uh, what interactive Austin powers bullshit can we find <laughs> DVD ROM um, menus and stuff. That is, yeah, I guess that's my jam. Like um, some of the few video game streams I've done in the past have, has involved like, I'm going to go into my old like backups of like my hard drives from the nineties and two thousands. And like, I'm going to show you like indie games that I found and have just been sitting on these hard drives. Sure. So like the, uh, there's like an archeology span thing to it that I like to do. <laughs> the click and plays. <laughs> yeah. And stuff. The click and plays. And like with a lot of stuff like this, there, uh, one thing that's makes it very easy is a uh, flashpoint, which is a, Oh yeah library of flash games that people have been archiving people where would gotten, the video game police be without flashpoint oh yeah flashpoint <laughs> is just a cool thing to find like it, technically a video game <laughs> um <laughs> stuff but like yeah with the austin powers thing like just shovelware or, and like the power rangers had some good stuff like activity centers and stuff like it that. it looks like a video game but it doesn't pass the smell test no. <laughs> yeah but I, I i do enjoy like when we like hit on a property that has that kind of ephemera that you wouldn't usually find on like a Twitch stream. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The mic. Oh, it wasn't an Austin Powers episode. It was, it was a, a Mike, Mike Myers. I made this. I was thinking about that on the ride over. I'm like, if that comes up, I feel like we're going to say Austin Powers more than Mike Myers. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. I mean, that was like three fourths of the episode. <laughs> here, we're going to do a role playing experiment <laughs> okay. here. Okay, Neil, mm-hmm. I'm Captain Disillusion and I'm about to put out a podcast about how I make my show. Mm-hmm. What do you want to hear about? Um, Max had a good joke on the drive over. So, um, what would be a good question to ask you? That's my question. Good joke, Max. Good yeah. joke. Thanks. Yeah. I also came up with the Alka Seltzer. Sorry, joke that I you stole from me yeah. for the I, seance. Max, you gotta say your jokes, <laughs> or we're just gonna take them. I didn't know when the video was coming back. Mm. I don't know if any of us knew when the video was coming back, which we is another thing we could get into. But well, well, but, uh, um, well, well how about okay? How about this? Uh, I, I think 
I'm, I'm serious about Google Sheets. We don't use it anymore, but like um, we should. Uh, Dan's all about it. Dan, yeah. Dan is the most organized amongst us in terms of show running, show prep, coming up with backups. Like, okay, if this game doesn't work, if the emulator fails, which does happen a lot, mm -hmm. um, like what's a good backup? What? Who knows how to play this? Do we have a hard hardware to do it? Do we have multiple controllers? Yada, yada, yada. Because mm -hmm. it's so easy for a show like this just to become the let's hook up a PC show. <laughs> like let's just yeah. have like, you know, a bunch of emulators running. Um, yeah. But no, like it, it is good to have a grid that contains here's the next game and here's uh, who can know. talk about it. Yeah. 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 I mean, that comes from again, 10 years of doing streams with like 10 to 20 plus people oh, yeah. going at any one good time. And then also just my career <laughs> as a project <laughs> manager. There's t there are times where we're either video game police or if I'm doing my own streams, just like, I'm just doing my job right now. I <laughs> need mm. to separate. I'll tell you right now, I like me some video games. I've, I made a feature film. My only feature film is all about video games and uh, computer fight. No, <laughs> <laughs> Hip hop, cherry pop. Yes. <laughs> but the performance anxiety of playing a video game live on the internet on top of all the technical minutia, I have to spin those plates in my head yeah. while we're doing the show. And I'm being not, like an entertaining speaker. It's like you're playing three video games at once. Yes. Mm -hmm. But Ryan, again, is the pinch hitter. Whenever like you feel the show's going to like, it's blood sugar is going down. Ryan just says like the surgically most funny fucking thing. <laughs> what game was, oh yeah, when we did our episode all about games with the letter Z, the very first game we played was Zoop. <laughs> and uh, the opening, the splash screen comes up. It's like, it was like the Super Nintendo or version of it or whatever. And it was just like a legal disclaimer. And Ryan just says, already quite litigious, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Zoop. Ryan, Ryan's the best in, st he stays in character and never breaks during yeah. the show. He's so into that. And I, I can't keep the cop motif going. There's no motif. Much. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. to be a cop. Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, people love cops, Kevin. You really yeah. got to drive mm -hmm. home the cop character. Was there any bad? Back and forth in the structure of video game police, it has certainly has evolved, but it felt like out of the gate we knew we play a game, the judge gives a verdict. Uh, we play a game, there's like maybe deliberations. We like mm -hmm. maybe read from the chat, maybe we don't. Yeah, there was a whole thing up front of like, oh, we'll have the chat sort of be the jury. And then yeah. we, we read the chat and the chat just was... Not Dude, helpful. Not helpful at all. Fish it's Neil. Oh. Neil. Hi, Neil. Fish emojis. No, there's some good. There's some free the nest quick <laughs> rabbit. No, there, there's, I'll tell you right now. There's some good. We've gotten some good feedback in the yeah. chat. There oh, was yeah. well, during our Power Rangers video game episode. This requires a bit of backstory. Uh, we play a lot of sound effects on the video game police. What? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, quite a few of them. Uh, there's, there's a high ratio of them that are fart sound effects. Uh, Come on, Neil. You got one, right? I, I tried to press all. I tried to press all three at a time, and it like opened up like the Alt Tab. <laughs> Switch user. No, uh, but uh, but uh, that's kind of our go-to. Like if we're playing a platforming video game and no one has anything to say about it because it's maybe it's a boring game. Like mm -hmm. you hit the fart sound when someone jumps, right? It's funny, and uh, we were playing some old Power Rangers game for like it was like a fan made mod of an nes game or something mm -hmm. and uh someone in the live chat wrote hey that enemy looks like he's gonna fart <laughs> <laughs> and that's when i knew the show was working <laughs> oh. <laughs> so no the chat does give us some good fodder yeah. some good fuel to work yeah. with um but I, the show one of the biggest evolutions of the show beyond like you know as dan mentioned like the lighting has changed and i think gotten much better um we've simplified a lot of that behind the scenes to make the show malleable like we can do the whole thing where like we cut all the lights except for the judge's light things like that. i love mm -hmm. that stuff uh, yeah the prayer sequence yeah the prayer sequences but um we've also started doing we it was like by like the third or fourth one we figured out that it's good to have a cold open on the judge talking to the audience while the mm -hmm. cops just sit there nodding like yeah the judge is the leader yeah <laughs> he's our zordon yeah he's our <laughs> when you you came and said we're gonna call it the video game police and we're gonna focus on doing crime games I think the first thing I pushed on was, okay, if that's the case, every episode needs to have a theme versus just your show and tell ephemera, bring whatever. Like every episode needs to have some sort of structure where we are judging or arresting mm. games with C, Animorph games, which that one, like, and we had a list. We had about four or five episodes, I think, out the gate, and we've done three of them. I think there's still two more in the list that we haven't done yet. Yeah. Um, I still think it's funny that 
games with the letter Z might be my favorite theme. And it was the most like day before, like, what can we do? Yeah. I don't know. Z games. That's a great theme. Mm. It's a good, Yeah. They're birds of a feather. <laughs> I think that also came from like, we, we were doing like, Two, like two episodes back to back. Yeah. And we're like, what we have the Austin, I think it was the Austin Powers one and then the Z one. And we're like, what are we going to do? And like during the Austin, we keep saying it, Mike Myers episode, mm-hmm. Neil and I both like realized we both played Return to Zork as kids. Yeah. Like, oh, Zork, we should do that. And then I think that's where the Z episode spawned from. I think it was just like, oh, we can't just do a whole episode on Return to Zork. Yes, we can. Yeah. <laughs> I say we go back and we, do We that. should probably finish Return to Zork at some point. The show and tell like, friend educational like mm. immediate education element of it someone getting to show you a game you have no familiar mm. like that's we why ba- i really we barely like scratched the surface of return to zork <laughs> well like something like bio freaks was so fun to get into because like i never played bio freaks ever and getting to finally see like wow this really was like a it's mortal Kombat, but in 3d yeah what was the rockstar game where you were like a smuggler's run or, yeah drug cartel or something like that yeah. similarly like it's it was a game that you knew very well that you were like really familiar with yeah um that i had never heard of before but you were like yo this game is fun as hell this game is fun let's play it yeah um, i like understanding the context of why a game came out the way it did yeah and you look at something like smuggler's run and i, I love getting to like say to you guys like okay this game is one of the first games to come out in the playstation 2 back when th- driving in 3d was a novelty like mm. this was the basically a tech demo that begat gta 3 those games are a bit dangerous because your brain just turns to mush as you play them whereas something like revolution x like the reptile brain does not take over because it's not fun. <laughs> There's no exploration there. You just can't help but clown on Aerosmith the entire time. Yeah. How do you pick a game for this type of show? <laughs> Cause it really depends on the, you know, the, uh, the crew, the, the theme. I mean, like we, uh, we were, you know, uh, rich with options for yeah. power rangers but um we could do another power rangers episode man oh yeah oh absolutely i think uh, we could do another phantom menace episode too there's quite a few <laughs> i really liked the phantom menace episode one because i'm it was one that was like that was one of the ones that was talked about at the beginning it was like oh ming and, and betty really love do this. love phantom menace they really want to do it it was on our list we finally got to do it, it was fun jordan was there it was we, three hours <laughs> we swapped out people but what i liked about it and this was an accident i really kind of want to do this in an episode is like pick a movie that has a lot of different game or game tie-ins and go through the structure of the movie through the games because we oh, accidentally did, did that. We did. Oh, we're like yeah. the first third of Fifth <laughs> Menace. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got the pod racers where, where yeah. we meet the clam. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mm. I thought that was just really fun. Like we played that PS one game. We got to the point where they got to Naboo and then we switched to the Lego game and we were on Naboo already. And it was like, Oh, this is working out swimmingly. Mm. Max, have you done, have you done one episode of video game police so far? Yeah. Just uh, the Animorphs episode. Yeah. Yeah. So when you came off of that, had you played any of the Animorphs games that we brought up? The maze game I had the scholastic.com game. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. But I think that was it. Uh, I had an idea that you guys would do uh, all games that have like Max in the title, and then it'd be like, "Here's our special guest, Jordan," <laughs> <laughs> with Judge Max. <laughs> no, like I'm not yeah, there yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one thing that changed about the show. The judge's wig is different now because <laughs> the wig that we picked for Ryan was too damn hot. <laughs> oh yeah, I still kind of prefer the first wig. I know, though. but yeah, I'm, w- I'm with you on that. But you you ain't the one wearing it for three hours. <laughs> You, you were once. You, were, did. you yeah, were once. Fine. Yeah, the whole time you were like, my oh. head runs cold. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's getting colder out in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. he'll, be, he'll be fine. We'll switch. Yeah, switch it up. Uh, we, winter weight wigs. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 We've as, got, oh, go sorry. I was just gonna say, as the most layman person here, like walk us through the the setup for the video game police because there's a lot happening over there. So yeah. like, what are what are the bits and pieces? Like, what's the gear that you have? Like, so the. First and form. Go ahead, Corey. No, I was just. I'm trying to think. Are you are you running three or four? I know it's like two C100s, right? No, no. We're we're a Sony family. Oh, so we uh. So basically, as far as the cameras are concerned, mm-hmm. we use Sony E mount full frame cameras. It's got to be full frame, uh, because I I don't have to do crop sensor math when we put different lenses on. Frankly, and it's quicker. So we use um multiple Sony FX sixes which are like what I would consider a traditional video camera body. They're incredible. They're, they're amazing cameras, super versatile. We also use Sony a seven four and a seven three, which are more like mirrorless. They look kind of like photography cameras. Uh, and they all have the exact same sensor 
they all use the same lenses and I own a bunch of Sony mount lenses and I just swap them on. Mm -hmm. They're great in low light. They also get shallow depth of field very quickly. They, 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 they're showy. They make our show look bit more like a movie. They have the Kevin look to me, at least when I see you can, you can get a good looking, (laughs) you can get a good looking piece of cinematography out of older cameras, like the five D Mark ones that were all the rage a million years ago, or Mm. even like the, the, the seven D's or like Mm. uh, all that stuff. You just, you just need to light it, you know, but, uh, but, uh, you need good lights. You need what's, uh, what's a high CRI light, a high color rating index light, and a lot of the lights we are now finally using are all Godox, Bowens mount, uh, COB chip on board lights. And uh, we use those for our fill light, which is what we use for the couch. Ryan is lit, well, the judge's seat is lit by a Came TV 55 watt Boltson Q Fresnel light that I'm not crazy about. I've actually been trying to sell them on Marketplace for a while, but they focus well. And um, they get the job done and the light for the judge never has to be changed. So I don't mm. need to, the, the, the Godox lights, the other lights, they're smart lights. They can be controlled with an app or through DMX control. What does DMX stand for? Do you remember digital multi-channel? Something? But uh, yeah, so those are the cameras. Those were our lights and our microphones are all Shure uh, SM58s running into currently a Zoom PodTrack P8, which we're using right now. Mm-hmm. Prior to using the, Zo- the Zoom PodTrack P8, we tried using a Zoom L8, which is a live mixer, and that does not have, did not have limiters, compressors, um, but uh, I had it. <laughs> we used it, and uh, we eventually got the new PodTrack P8 because it does have limiters and compressors, and it is better. It's still not quite the right tool for the job, but we've been able to Frankenstein it into doing what we need to do because, you know, I was attracted to it because it seemed simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was also the right price and it had sound effects buttons, but we've learned it's probably best if the sound effects are divorced from the podcast mixer and on their own bespoke device that, that, uh, that, that uh, is either Bluetoothed or wired into the mixer. Uh, yeah, see, we just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. we have dueling uh, soundboards right there. Yeah, so, <laughs> see, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can just keep talking. This whole damn show is just like a sound wave that looks like my face. Uh, but uh, yeah. And the, what the, are we what are we using for video mixing? Is it the ATEM yes, Mini we're, Plus? So we we're using an ATEM Mini Extreme. 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 Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I found that, my old sound effects boards here. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. So what that, that which I think the Black Magic ATEM mixers are incredible values for the money. Uh, you can get them for three hundred dollars for the most basic ones, and they still do a lot of what we use for our show. We use the thousand dollar model, and. Uh, it's an HDMI based device. All mm-hmm. the cameras plug in over HDMI. The HDMI can also carry audio, which comes in very handy when you're playing back video games on HDMI devices. It's good for making mixing a bit easier. Uh, and we have that black magic ATEM mini extreme hooked up to a multi view, which is just a monitor that lets you see every camera, every source at once. So when we're doing the show, I'm often looking off screen at a screen, off camera at a screen that shows what the video game mm. looks like, what each camera looks like. It lets me know if the cameras are all on, if something's out of focus, yada, yada, yada. And all of that is hooked up via ethernet directly to my internet at the house, which is all hardwired. And I, I have fiber optic, gig, extremely reliable, extremely reliable gig up, gig down internet. Uh, we had one or two times we got some weird latency issues doing the show live. Which and might I, have been on our end, might not have. Been. Full disclosure, we're going to try and start pre-taping some of Video Game Police. Not because we want to like tweak the show, but it just takes so much stress out of the equation. And everybody should do that. That's like <laughs> how like every late night talk show is done. You live edit and then you post later. Right? Yeah, we don't really take advantage of having a, a, a live chat so much and like if we do it as a premiere on youtube we still get you know people get to watch it together yeah um but i uh, like doing it live but it it, there are times it's really stressful oh yeah and having to delay 15 minutes every single time just because of i don't know yeah and that's our brand i was (laughs) i was telling people like what it took to from what i witnessed because i just sort of stood there and went like hooray halloween uh the (laughs) stream of screams uh, which we should get into at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
I was telling people like, yeah, I saw Kevin like press a button and a thing would work and he would press the same button and the same thing wouldn't work. And yeah. that stuff, it gets frustrating. There's yeah. um, w- when it comes to live mixing, uh, video mixing, there's, there's many different schools of thought about how best to do it. There are different brands, different hardware manufacturers. Heck, you can do a lot of it in software. Um, a lot of people use OBS, the open broadcast system, which we do use as a bit of a Swiss army knife behind the scenes, usually to, um, allow Neil to take his gaming laptop. I'll get into how <laughs> how I handle the games and I'm handling like 90% of the games. Sometimes you'll bring out a um, console, an actual console, but because of the era of games that we tend to play, it's simpler. Yeah. We, the first few episodes we were switching game sources so much and it was just becoming too taxing to juggle like okay the hdcp stripping box hooked up to this playstation 3 will allow us to actually capture video from the ps3 because the ps3 is like famously difficult to get um uh, hdcp copyright protection restrictions lifted from but Corey had a box that could do it so we 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 would have that running and then if we want to switch to other video games because of the way we're routing all the feeds it's we basically have to just physically unplug it and then plug in Neil's computer. So yeah, more and more often we are just trying to run everything off one box if possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, are we, do you want to talk about like, did you want to talk about like the way you do the games on your <laughs> laptop and then we can move on to oh, the yeah. other streams? Cause I could, I could talk uninterrupted about this shit for like six hours. I, I remember <laughs> yeah, when we first started, um, you know, I was having the emulator run on my, on my laptop um, plus uh, the sound effects. And I was trying to do stuff like set up macros where like I press F1, and it'll take me to the OBS screen so I can tweak stuff there. And then F2 will bring me to the... Sure. Um, that ended up causing more problems than uh, than it solved. So now I have a, a different smaller laptop for the sound effects. And sound I love this thing. Yeah, people know we can play sound oh, effects. Yeah. You don't need to prove it. Prove it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, and and this way I can just kind of like focus on just like making sure the emulation runs smoothly on my proper laptop, which I have, uh, wired controllers connected to. Sometimes we do wireless ones, but the the wired ones are cheap (laughs) and I can just get like the same model four of the same model. If we need to play four player game, they'll all connect. Like Shrek super slam. Yeah. Um, it's it's all just retro art. Uh, running the games. I feel like you and I have learned a lot about emulation from this show. I learned from the video game police that GameCube games are much easier to emulate than PlayStation 2 games for some reason. They have easier architecture to approximate. So we do tend to play more GameCube than PS2. We've done some PS2 games that have been surprisingly good because I don't remember that ever working when I first got into emulation. I guess the the coding has caught up (laughs) these days uh, to some degree. But um. Yeah, for the most part, like Retro Arch can do most consoles. There's a couple that I've I've done like like a third party software sure. separately, and one macro that I have set up, I think in OBS, is um, just like capture the currently focused window. Yeah. Instead of capturing my whole desktop and seeing like, accidentally seeing like you know Windows icons or like me like moving a social security number yeah or yeah. just like the obs window itself which has yeah. still happened a few times yep um i i can just like set up obs to uh output a projector which is it's basically the hdmi out and then it, obs will automatically capture and resize to full screen whichever window i want which is great for like flash games which are sure. like 100 by 100 pixels yeah. it'll just automatically make that full screen um, and I like when you, you've pulled up a couple engage games every now and then, and you can always tell there were some like Oreo <laughs> ice cream truck driving game we played oh, yeah. on like the junk food episode. Yeah. And I was like, man, the aspect ratio of this is phone. <laughs> yeah. Not, not, not smartphone phone. phone. <laughs> uh, yeah, I literally had to find apparently like a Nokia game emulator to play. Like, uh, we got feet. We got help from someone on how to play the, the, um, what's the Mike Myers movie? Uh, I love oh, Guru. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love Guru. So yeah. we actually had to get help from somebody. I oh it wasn't God, worth it. I, I, I went <laughs> on a YouTube. I, I went on a YouTube search to try and figure out how to play that game, and I found like one guy who had played this game. His name was Ryan. Ryan Pfeiffer, mm-hmm. um, and he had a YouTube upload of like twenty 
views of him playing this love guru phone game. And I commented, Hey, um, can I just ask like what software you use to get this EPK or whatever to work? And he commented back the next day, Oh, is this for video game police? <laughs> <laughs> it turned out he had watched our show. So, uh, thank you again, Ryan, for all your help with us playing the love guru Nokia phone. game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Chicago just gets. Me. Are we doing a Jim Carrey episode? Sorry, we could. There's we, a mask game. Is there, we played the Ace Ventura the, game. Yeah, the Ace Ventura game. Oh, that's right. Are there any Sonic games? <laughs> I guess that counts now. Yeah, true. Cor Corey, yeah. I are there Sonic movie tie-in games? No, no. I guess that's just a weird like they, feedback. So, loop, so you know, right? okay, let me put it this way: they're making a Sonic three movie, right? Yep. And um, rather than make a Sonic, like a new video game, mm -hmm. they took um, a PS3 360 Sonic game and put like some elbow grease into like porting it to modern video games and also made like kind of like a DLC expansion where you play as Shadow the Hedgehog voiced by Keanu Reeves. Ooh. No, no, that's not out yet. But it's coming out for it the is, third movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is that's like kind of like I they're... sat there and let you say that. I'm like, I'm glad he's saying it, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Co Corey, one thing... I want to get into, this is more like, not esoteric, but like philosophical, just like the process of making a show like this. I, I, I've i been farting around with cameras since I was a kid, you know, yeah. like learning how to make movies and trying to emulate what I consider a real movie as often as I can. Yeah. And you then just like, said fart and I didn't do the thought. I know. I was just waiting for it. Are you proud of me? I looked <laughs> at the button and almost thought, grabbed it. Go on, go on. <laughs> Slack. So, <laughs> so I was farting around. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the theater of your mind. But uh, when it came to this, you know, there was like there, there were lessons learned, like no matter how many times you measure, you might not cut properly. When it came to this, you're really good brass tacks. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? You you were really big on like the kiss philosophy. Just like keep it simple, stupid. Like don't ever think this like hardwire this use XLRs for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like I, what? I hate. Software, software, and Same. stuff. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a big software guy. The older I get, it's and it's not that I'm technophobic. I, I, I it's just that I, I want to hit a button and the damn thing works. And uh, when damn things don't work, it's ninety percent of the time a software bug. Mm. No, but there's there's definitely been like a few times where like I should I'm here early and like you're setting up some lights and you're like oh and I got this battery for this one and this battery for that one and I look and I'm like plug it in. You think we can just plug that in? And you're like well we could and I'm like. Plug it. Just plug it in. What, what was that? What's the name of the the breakout XLR cable you told me to get? A snake? Yeah, it's just like a stage snake. Yeah, like like I've um, learned a lot about audio yeah, hardware for, from you. For one of the shows, I think we were. I don't remember why, but we were running stuff into your office. I think space. it was the Phantom Menace episode, um, and it was kind of like, hey, if we plug this XLR into this XLR into this XLR, it's long enough, and we do that with all of these, and I. Well, let me, let me paint a picture. <laughs> let me paint a picture to the audience at home. So I, I have like a barn ceiling garage attached to my house. And I went out of my way when I bought my house a couple of years ago. I renovated the whole thing on my own. Um, Corey helped a bunch with the kitchen in particular. And I decided to put a window in between my office and the garage specifically for live streaming. Mm. The idea was, hey, I'll treat my office like the uh, broadcast booth. For many episodes of Video Game Police, we were literally running like 30 foot XLR and HDMI cables just across the garage into my office. Like it just looked like literal spaghetti. Uh, and you pointed out like, you know, they do make cables specifically for this that consolidate all of these L little things like that. Like you, you've been um, a major, uh, a good teacher, uh, frankly, uh, to simplify the process hmm. of the way these things go. So this is all to say there's, there, there's quite a hive. There's a collective of inputs on how we make this show happen. It's not just yeah. All right, everyone sit down, shut up, look at this camera, and play a video game. There's like, hey, what's good streaming etiquette, Dan? Like, should we? How often do we consult the uh, the people watching? Um, is it a bad idea or to, to try and do a bunch of different consoles over the course of three hours? Should we just do one? Do people want to see 16 bit games back to back to back? It'd be very easy to do that for the whole show. Uh, how do we? How do we simplify the audio core? Mm. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, but uh, so, yeah, like there's been, definitely been a it's been a really fun project. It's like it's like a lot of grown men will get together to like play poker or like watch sports or whatever. We mm. get together to like pool our resources and ambitions of uh, let's do a live show. Like, like, how can we do it? Well, we all kind of like video games, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so yeah. we can make fun of them. Right? I was I was definitely really happy that like 
you know, seen the first stream that it's still, it very much has like your guaranteed video fingerprint on it. Sure. Um, it looks, it looks like something that you guys have done. You know what I mean? Whether it's, yeah. whether playing video games or whatever you're doing in that space. I think Ryan in a costume really. <laughs> Ryan in a costume, there. but like the, the video production quality, the lighting quality. The backlighting it, and the costumes. And the, it, yeah. it looks like, you know, like you could watch a, one of these live streams and Mr. Basement like back to back and you're sure. like, oh yeah, this like. Same guys, same can, universe. Can we talk about when we did that the the Halloween video game show? Sorry, the Bones in episode. <laughs> bones. And Corey brought this like super duper smoke machine that's built for like a stadium. And <laughs> we put it in my garage. Oh and yeah, like, and just trying to get it to not explode, go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> How many watts? Is it just a thousand watts? Uh, I think it's an eighteen hundred watts. 1800 Jesus. Watts. <laughs> so like I had it turned as far down as possible, but when I trigger it it would spit and then would like not be pissed off, but it would still like continue. Like once it stopped, it was still like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not it's like done a, yet. It's like a truck engine idling. It's like yeah. a place just to be, let me put it to you this way. If you go to like spirit Halloween or Walmart and buy a smoke machine, it's usually 400 Watts. And that's like $50. The machine Corey brought was 450% more powerful. <laughs> Is this the machine we used to, uh, fog up, fog up the your, outdoors, the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, so, so for high that, moon. Yeah. That's the one that we used in front of your house for high moon. And yeah. there was a point where you were like, this, we can't see the house. We have to like, <laughs> we have to fan out the outside for a little bit. That's amazing. <laughs> My neighbors yeah. are going to call the police on me. Yeah. But yeah, no, like or the firefighters. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fun to do a live production. Yeah. There's a certain amount of stress taken out of the equation. When you, you hit the button, you do the show, you hit the button and it's over. That's like the main impact. Traction. And Frank, a lot of it's cool that, you know, more or less Neil, Ryan, and I are the ones shepherding all like the guaranteed video stuff, whether it's like Ernest Roulette or our movies or podcasts for the most part. Mm -hmm. But with Video Game Police, it's been cool just to like have all like the, the, the our, our friends come by, like when people are visiting. Like Jordan came up from Texas and he did a few episodes. And I love having Ming on the show. And it's mm -hmm. like nice, like just shoot the shit with her and make jokes about how Rita and uh, Lord Raiden should fuck. And like, it's, like, it's fun to do that live and just have that camaraderie on camera without the pretense of script writing or like, you know, the premeditation between takes like, mm. in the movie, you know, like, okay, we gotta, no, 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 no. Kevin, say it like this. Like you, you missed, you flubbed this line. The inflection needs to be here. Oh, you missed your light. Oh, it's out of focus. I'll, I'll say that we, sometimes on short films because of the, the different stresses of doing that, the mood might turn sour. Yeah. It's happened a few serious times in our lives. Yeah. And when you're live on camera, you can't let that happen. And that is nice. <laughs> <laughs> but if it does happen, it's great for ratings. That's true. I, I, I thought you were going to go in a completely different direction. So it just doesn't really, it does. Cause like, you know, we get stressed, uh, do, but like, yeah. it's like, you really gotta be, you know, you gotta put on a happy face and keep the mood light. Repress and, those feelings. <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's a spot repressing and it's, it, it, it feels more like, Oh, this is what I'm actually doing. I'm about mm -hmm. to literally play a fart sound effect when dressed like a yeah. detective going, yeah. we're going to get to the bottom of cool spot <laughs> yeah. tonight. Like, you know, when things are going to shit in a handbag and I check the live stream and it's just like 30 comments talking about fish for some reason. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, it's not that big a deal right now. Yeah, <laughs> we did, There was one guy who watches our shows. Um, Alex Johnson, I think is his name. And, uh, he caught, uh, one time we had, a, we have a sound effect we play. That's just like a guy screaming mm -hmm. and it's, it's uh, from Twisted Metal 2. It's like it's the sound effect. Of the, the, that's it. That's it. That's the sound you hear when you run over like a mime in Paris and Twisted Metal 2. And Alex Johnson caught it immediately in the live comments. He was like, is that like the Twisted Metal 2 sound effect when you run over someone? I'm like, yeah, Alex, he that guy knows video games. Like, or at least Twisted Metal 2. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I do, I do, I just want to stress, I do like the live feedback, but mm. like, you know, like it... But people are clearly watching as a hang. They're not watching for like the narrative thrust of video game police. And yeah, like, and we generally don't let them affect the stream. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, well, some streamers will do that. They'll take requests and, and shit. And sure, like sure, sure. Yeah. It, but like what I'm getting at is like it. looking at the chat reminds me that this is all just in good fun. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's mm -hmm. just here to like goof off. People will straight up comment and and say in the in, in the, the live feed as well kevin stop pointing out that things are going wrong mm -hmm. just enjoy it <laughs> like just goof kevin up. we tell you that while we're on the show i know you guys have to because i just want it to look so damn good a lot of what we've said can apply to the stream of screams which we've done twice it's the same shit it's basically sort of <laughs> no it's not but it's uh the stream of screams um 
This is the reason like we haven't done as many video game police recently. Well, we did a few in October and we haven't done any this month. We almost right? did one tonight. I think we're going to do a next Friday. Yeah. Um, but, um, I forget what like the progression was, but like, well, last October we talked about, we have to do something for Halloween. Mm -hmm. We got to do something for Halloween. And the idea became, Hey, this is, it's easier to do it live, right? Maybe we could like do a live show and kind of put our elbow grease into that. Like ever have it feel like one of our shows. And, um, for the most part, last year's show went great, except for, I, I didn't know that a stereo output from the black magic mixer mm -hmm. would, um, phase cancel itself. <laughs> yeah. It sounded a little funky. It sounded like it was underwater, but this year's show sounded much better, but both shows had a snicker treat shit. Mm -hmm. Like that was the idea was like, let's do like a Conan O'Brien style talk show with our friends and um, just do a bunch of fun Halloween crap so that no matter what happens, we'll feel like we had a good Halloween, <laughs> you know, it's true. You ever get that? Like you ever like really look forward to Halloween and then it comes and goes and like you get a week into November and you're like, damn it. Missed like, it. <laughs> I, I didn't do enough for Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I definitely had that this year. Oh, really? I was going to say. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the stream was great, but just I, I had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. And I was like, oh, man, I didn't watch this movie. I didn't watch this special. I didn't yeah. eat this candy. I feel like I'm still playing catch up with Halloween. I, I feel like stream watched Tales from the Crypt the other night. Like, st stream of Screams. Post election. <laughs> stream, stream of Screams really. Uh, it makes it. I feel like I get a, like my palate like is taken care of. Like, you know, I'm a, I have a full Halloween stomach from doing stream of screams. Yeah. Like I didn't do a party this year or anything. I have um, a kid. So I like, you know, I had a huge party last year mm -hmm, and I had so many people asking me, are you doing it again? I'm like, I, I had like 50 fucking people in my house and it was fun, but my God, the amount of work involved yeah. in that, I'd rather apply that work much less work to stream of screams this time it was kind of like there was a thousand people in your house for sixty thousand people sixty that well yeah. now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but the, like well that, that one went to my channel and i think we had more eyes on it like during sure. the stream right well that that's the, that's another thing with youtube this is just becoming a youtube stitch and bitch but youtube really wants you to do stuff live and then they bury your live crap that's another advantage of uh doing it as a premiere I yeah think. people will see it yeah like, it, like you, it's, it's, it's just, it's nothing like stopping us from just uploading the file though. Like set like a second time. And I know, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, for the love of the game. Like we're talking about how fun it is to do. It is genuinely fun. Mm. And like, I love learning and pushing our limitations and all that. And we are just genuinely hanging out when the cameras are rolling, mm -hmm. but also like, I want people to see it, you know, yeah. like I want people to like participate and enjoy it. So yeah, the VOD live premiere approach might We'll see how it goes for the next episode. I think I think it's going to take a lot of stress out of the equation. Well, we still might stream while we're doing it, but only to maybe patrons or something. It might just be like a smaller audience that can like hang while we're doing it. Mm. Um, and it's really not a money making scheme. I really don't care about the Patreon. <laughs> well, let's like, rewind like a bit. Money. <laughs> we were talking about the stream of screams. Yes, 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 yes. I, I saw you hovering your finger <laughs> over like, what to press, what the, to press. The green button. <laughs> the green button. Um, stream of Screams. I, f I forget what order we did stuff in, but we were talking about like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we got some celebrity cameos? Are you you talking, so we're talking about 2024 specifically. This, this year, doing it again. Because because le last year was kind of... We should talk about last year. Okay, sure. sure. Because, because like Max, you weren't here for last year's. Nope, I was hanging out with Neil's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I really was. The, the, the idea you know, came from, hey, let's do a kick-ass live show. It was kind of our first foray into really like doing it. Like you had done some streams on your channel, Neil. Like was this the, our first time streaming from your garage? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And like, let's go on in on Halloween. Let's And you came up with a bunch of fun activities and I focused exclusively on tech mm -hmm. and it made everything work except the audio, which is half the equation. <laughs> but yeah, like, do, do you remember Corey and Dan? Like, I think we just wrangled you. Like, we want to do a Halloween show. Do you want to be like co-hosts on this? I, Kevin shouldn't be on camera because he's got to make sure it doesn't burn down. Yeah, that's how I remember. I remember just being like, Julie's coming. Ryan's going to be there. Corey, Dan, do you want to just sit down and hang out? It's a last supper presentation of Halloween. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like at that point I was basically at your house almost every other night. Yeah. Like I was here a lot. And Were so you still was, like building your house basically. Kind of. Like, yeah. I still am. Oh well, <laughs> yeah. But I mean like it was like pretty heavily under construction for a long time. I, yeah. I, had, I had a, I had like two or three bad contractors in a row and I was just like, I, I just need to do as much as I can on my own. And like, we had just kind of finished up the, I mean, the kitchen had been done for a while, but no, like Corey was over a lot helping me, yeah. like, like helping me like run fiber optics under. My yeah. And stuff. Yeah. So I, I think it was kind of a, Hey, instead of running cables on the walls, 
this night you want to stream and i'm like yeah sure i'll sit in the garage instead of in the uh the crawl space under the house did uh <laughs> did okay so one of my, my favorite part of the first stream of screams was neil writing uh with some computer assistance oh uh yeah. dumb ass horror stories <laughs> and uh neil had told me and sneaking it, them in as um scary stories to tell in the dark yeah neil, neil told me and no one else he was like hey i'm gonna do this do you think it'll work like yeah yeah, yeah. like like and you started with Corey. so live on the internet you gave Corey the book and you're like okay go for it and it was the first horror story was like called like the horse race or horse fight. fight julie julie went first <laughs> the horse did julie fight. go first oh julie went we first. mixed it in with real one but she read a real one. Oh, that was right yeah, yeah yeah the horse fight <laughs> and so i go in and I don't, I don't know the book very well, mm-hmm. and I had zero idea that what I was reading was. So you were the perfect mark. <laughs> it was perfect, yeah. I got probably three quarters of the way through, and I think I was questioning a lot of yeah. it. I'm like, Horse I'm like, guys, you like this book? Like, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Keep reading. I think yeah. I maybe I gave you like the more subtle one first. So yeah. Kind of yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely ramped. It ramped up. I, I couldn't believe how much you broke Ryan. I've never seen Ryan break that. I've known Ryan since we were a land during seven years. <laughs> I've known Ryan since I was seven, eight years old. I've never seen Ryan break that bad. It was oh, so it's, it's like heartwarming. Yeah. My mother texted me the next day about like, that was like one of the funniest things we've ever done. It was like just making Ryan laugh. And she just wanted to watch Ryan laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we were all, yeah. So, okay. So Kelly laughing, but that, that, that was the idea though. Hey, let's do a live show for my house. Finally, yeah, it's like, make a cat. like we'll have the, Julie come out. Yeah. I think those might've been the, well, cause we also had like the, the goosebumps board game and sure. stuff like that, but, um, kicking the tires and how to do it. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the prep work was like the, the scary stories. And I also like collected a bunch of Halloween costume pictures for us to laugh at. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that, that worked out pretty well. And then this year we're like, let's do it again. Let's double dip. And uh, I was like, ah, I don't know, like, what else can we do? Like, I, I kind of, and I ended up like finding like, all right, there's more funny Halloween costumes out there. The you movie know? trailer idea was great. Review, th- that was a good way to break it up. The Beavis and Butthead of it all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The we, movie trailers were like trailer, like years ago I had a Halloween party. I was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I had a projector going? And yeah, I, uh, I like found a bunch of like 70s trailers that would just look good with no sound. Yeah. And that's where I found the baby. <laughs> that looks good with no sound that was like ah visual masterpiece i mean it, it looks uh like what the fuck is going on okay fair um, enough yeah but uh i when you suggested like why don't we like cash in a few like people we know who would make fun cameos well we so to backtrack a bit i liked the the shape of the video game police like where we had landed like it had evolved well like dan you said it after i think the z episode you're like every episode needs to open now on ryan looking at the camera giving a speech with like patriotic music like like yeah that's a great way to do it maybe we could like occasionally like couch gag this and yep. have someone who needs the video game police I reached out to James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, because I've worked with him before. He's a swell guy to work with. He, he sent me a Christmas card once. He's, mm-hmm. he's a nice dude. And Some recognizable and internet guy. Y- yeah. Well, and also video games. Well, like, you know, like, <laughs> and, um, for our non video games. So, so, so I reached out to him and I said, hey, no pressure, but like in any time in the next like four or five weeks, would it be possible to, to do this? He didn't have time and I totally get it. Like he's, constantly filming stuff mm-hmm. and he tries really hard to have a healthy work-life balance he was super cool about it and um i'll probably bug him again in a year but i refused to feel defeated i doubled down I'm like okay we didn't get the angry video game nerd to pick up a phone and yell get me the video game police who can oh, right yeah that, that was not for the halloween that was specifically for the video game police okay. and i still want to do that but then yeah we talked about okay who who else could we network into doing this and what was the chicken in the egg here was it Al Capone dot 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 let's get no. Al's <laughs> no it was literally I was just going through like well who are people that like would work as a cameo like I know plenty of creatives who might not necessarily have their face out there um and you suggested Weird Al follows you why don't you just DM him what's what's the harm and I said like oh yeah. no I don't want to do that it's too embarrassing you know <laughs> like okay Kevin I'll get right on that when you call Bruce Springsteen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's true. Like Weird Al, I've, I've talked about this on the podcast, but like he DM'd me to say that he enjoyed, I think, mouth moods, or yeah. mouth dreams or something. Um, and I told you to frame that DM. I know it really, it like made my year 2020. Like I needed, I needed something. <laughs> um, 
And, uh, but, uh, I, I said like, no, nah, I don't, I don't feel right about doing that. I feel like I, I like felt cringy, like trying to even attempt. I know exactly how you felt. Cause I felt that way like a week later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think I like, I kept thinking about it and like looking at like, who are people I know who've been in front of cameras and I realized like, well, we got Alan who like Captain Disillusion was probably one of the first names because like we've loved him and he's just like the exact kind of person we'd we've, love to do a cameo. We've talked for literally years like, man, how cool would it be to do something with Captain Disillusion? Mm -hmm. And I think I think Ryan made the joke like, what, have him like buy us beer? What would he do <laughs> for us? Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> would it be cool if Captain D showed up in like a new Kids in the Rock episode? But we're mm -hmm. not going to make any more of those. It doesn't work anymore. And um, this felt right. I realized while we were having the Weird Al conversation, you and I, Neil, because I was on top, I, I, like I was hitting you up like once a week for like a month. I'm like, we got to do this. You got to do this. Yeah. Um, and the uh, example you sent me was like the Pee Wee Herman, the Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special where he, he keeps going into the video booth and talking to like Oprah and stuff. Oprah, Whoopi Goldberg, all of them. Yeah. Al was like the brass ring. And like number two is like, I would love to get Captain D yeah. for our own personal edification. Is that the word? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Satisfaction. And I, I think I was just like going through like other people I know on Twitter, like, oh, obviously Alex Hirsch would definitely do it. Uh, maybe I could uh, get in touch with. Um, now, for the people at home, we do, might not know. Oh, Alex. he yeah, he uh, is. Uh, he He's the creator of Gravity Falls. He's um, just well known enough, especially among Gravity Falls fans. But like his face is recognizable to you, your plenty buddy. of our chat. Yeah. And you two, you two are buds. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he owed me. And uh, <laughs> Captain Disillusion, for you, those of you who don't know, he's like a prolific YouTuber that's been at it for a long time. I, I think most people at this table have watched his stuff, uh, if not with me on their own accord and like him uh, a lot. I mean, I love his stuff. He's probably my, he's like, if you had to define how, what YouTube is at its best, it's that dude stuff for mm -hmm. my, for my money. It turns out that he and I had a mutual friend, uh, Joey VFX, who I've worked with on a few projects now. I've, I've hired him to do some 3D work for me. He did a shot for my documentary, not for resale. And, um, I was already planning on writing Alan captain disillusion. And I had the, I had the email ready and it dawned on me at that point. Oh, wait a minute. I, ha I have like a connection. Like I, I have a friend who, who knows yeah, this guy play that card. Yeah. And, um, I asked him, I said, you don't have to say yes, <laughs> but like, <laughs> w c is there a way you could like grease this palm? Like, like I, I have his email and everything, but like, I'm going to send it. And, um, Joey did me a solid and he let mm. captain D know. And I, I, Alan told Joey like, Oh yeah, that sounds funny. Yeah. Captain and, D's real name is Alan, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he, he came yeah. through like, that process and I'm sure you felt the same emotion with weird Al mm -hmm. when they say yes. And then you have to tell them what you want them to do. <laughs> and it's the dumbest goddamn thing you've said to someone you respect in a hot man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. All right. Anyway, here's like the process of like when I realized like, oh, we actually should do this. It was when uh, we were like just kind of brainstorming. I was like, okay, Alan, Captain D, not Weird Al, Alex Hirsch, you'd do it. Maybe I could get in touch with uh, Alan Resnick, another video creator. Right? It has to be uh, Al, because at this point... No, no, no. This is when I realized, like, wait a minute, everyone I'm mentioning <laughs> begins with Al. <laughs> no, it really was like the end of, like, a murder mystery when I was like, wait a minute, Captain Disillusion's name begins with A-L? <laughs> oh, and that's kind of when I realized, like, all right, if I could... I have, like, four people. I could at least get, like, a couple of them, I'm sure. Then and then I it, I have to I have to text Weird Al. I have to call him. Not call him, but I, <laughs> I DM'd him on Twitter. And um Al, being a reasonable person, uh doesn't use Twitter much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. You, yeah, you got it right in time. Yeah, I was about to say, talk about like oh, yeah. the eleventh hour of Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent him the message and I, I um uh, I'll read what I said. Hey, Al, my friends and I are doing a silly Halloween live stream and would love to get a short pre-taped selfie video from you making some ghostly sounds and wishing us all a merry Halloween. In context, we'll be doing a seance and summon you by mistake. Nothing fancy, just a surprise, random surprise that we wouldn't advertise or anything. So if you can't, no worries and have a spooky October. And then like a week later, he got back to me and said like, hey, sorry, I haven't been on Twitter recently. I, I don't use it much. It's he's, bad. He's on Blue Sky now. We're all on Blue Sky. It's the better one. It is. But yeah, he gave me his email and 
I emailed him with like a more in-depth script of you, what he ultimately ended up doing. You and I were talking about this. Is this too much? Is this, too is this enough? Yeah. If we're going to shoot our shot, how many lines of dialogue can you ask of Weird Al before right. you're being a jerk? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, uh, I don't think we were being a jerk, but um, I felt really well, we were bad. self-conscious. We were very self-conscious because uh, he, when he wrote, he wrote back to the script and said like, oh, I misunderstood your DM. I did exactly what you, you told me to do. I made ghostly sounds and wished you a happy Halloween. <laughs> and he sent me that video and it's great. We used it as like the tail end of our stream. Yeah. But he also said, uh, I'm going to be out of town for a while, but... Um, when I get back, you know, maybe I can get it together. And we're, I was just like, I was very grateful. I was like, look, if it's too much for you, don't worry about it. Like, this is perfectly usable. We totally could have used that first one. We did. But yeah. um, ultimately, like a couple days before our stream, he came back and said, like, got what you wanted. And he gave us two fucking takes of it. Woo! Like, and um, like, yeah. so he sent us three video. Like, what a, what, a, what, a, what a dude. Yeah. I think some people who watch might think he's on like cameo or something. No, it was not a cameo. Not we did cameo. not pay him. Yeah. Someone thought favorite. you yeah. just found a clip of him like well, doing yeah. that somewhere. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You remember Weird Al's MTV uh, interviews with us, other celebrities where he took them out of context. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we thought about that. Yeah, we, we, we thought that would be funny. <laughs> Uh, so th yeah, that's how we got Al. And once we had Al, like it definitely gave me the confidence to send my email to captain D cause it's just so much easier. Like there's just, mm -hmm. I bet all my life savings that captain disillusions, a weird Al fan. <laughs> I just know, you know, <laughs> like you don't need to think <laughs> of and, course. So that's how you build it. Like, Hey, listen. Yeah. Well, he literally said like when Alan got back to me, captain D he said, Oh man, it's a fun opportunity being the opening act for weird Al. Uh, we, we asked Alan like, Hey, like, you don't have to be in the Captain D makeup for you, for those who don't know Captain Disillusions. Like this is like pretty, it's a pretty high falutin mm. production show for you too. And uh, since like 2009, it's been the best looking. Uh, <laughs> like his whole shtick is he works way too hard. <laughs> yeah, that's like the running gag is yeah. that he's like displeased. Like the subtext of all his jokes is that he's displeased with how low the bar is for entertainment on the internet. Yeah, at least that's my read on it. Yeah, <laughs> um, but he you know he's always in makeup and a bit of a costume. He presents himself as kind of like a late 80s, early 90s uh, ch a children's television show host, kind of kinda Captain of Planet, but for uh, dispelling bullshit. Ca one part Captain Planet, one part Beekman, one part maybe like reading Rainbow. Like that's like kind of like the cocktail of the show, right? Mm -hmm. And um, when we wrote him, we said, hey, listen, uh, when I wrote him, I said, you don't need, we just want you to play yourself because he does show up as himself on Captain Disillusion as mm -hmm. Alan. And uh, as, as an unpaid intern mm -hmm. that's treated poorly, that's the joke. And we thought it'd be funny. Let's just get Alan. Mm -hmm. Like it'd be really funny if during the show when we're doing this seance for uh, Al Capone, we just get a guy named Alan and we're like, oh, let's just keep moving and not pay any heed to it. That was going to be the joke. Like people who know would be like, holy shit, that's Captain Disillusion. And <laughs> yeah. you're like not paying it. You're not calling any attention to it. And then he wrote back and the son of a bitch wrote, hey, do you want me to like be in character as Captain Disillusion and I could like berate myself and we're like, yeah, if you want to like <laughs> yeah. shoot that and do the visual effects. He and, got it. And he, he gave us like I, I told Dan this because I, 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 I wrote I wrote what I wanted him to say. Like I wrote the script and I showed it to Neil and I showed it to Dan. And I, I told Dan, I'm like, I'm kind of like embarrassed. This is like like fan fiction, but like with omnipotence, like it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I know. That's how I felt. Writing, I was writing Weird Al dialogue for Weird Al to perform based on my... Uh, just on my mental impression of like, here's how he talks when he does cameos yeah, and things. You like, have to write. You're writing jokes for someone. Yeah, it's 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 weird. Um, Dan, I, I sent you like here's my idea for a joke. It's it's gonna be a bit of like a marble mouth, but that's kind of his thing. And I think he could nail this. And it's gonna be you know like how do we work the name Alan to it? And you you had the gag, Dan. You had the yes and, which was uh uh. I, I said, I, I, cause originally in the script I wrote, I want to make a play on V O I P cause a lot of people think that means video over IP and it doesn't it means voice over IP. You mean a V O I P. And that was in the script. And Dan said, you should make it something supernatural, like yep. audio video over interdimensional portal. Mm -hmm. And like that, that was like the perfect back and forth. Cause it's such a captain D joke, you know? And it like, it played off like our, the motif of like the people at the table. Like, like I knew like, well, I have to say that one of the guys has to be confused and I have to say it very like you know, Dan Aykroyd, like oh, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, but doing it live meant like all performances <laughs> were out the window. We just were like, oh, just say the line and keep moving. 
To uh, be clear, we were doing it live. They were pre-taped, yeah. and we were just triggering their responses while yeah. we did it live. But I, I, as soon as Weird Al said yes, that's kind of when I realized, like, oh, I got to work harder on this one <laughs> than whole, I did last year. The, the whole, whole show, show has, has to, to be go good perfectly, and it did. It actually did. <laughs> there was a uh, skit writing session like two weeks before. There uh, was, yeah. I, uh, um, I, I prepared, you know, the tarot cards. Those were I bought a printer. To that's when those. we knew we needed Max. Like oh you, yeah, because you suggested, uh, why don't we do something with tarot cards? I'm like, well, this but one man <laughs> who can do tarot <laughs> readings. Net Max had done this old YouTube video. Is it still up? Probably. I, I only took like one thing down. It's because I used a word that later became a slur. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you, trans community. I'm sorry. I, I, oh. I, I've made more than one movie where the word gypsy was all over. I mean, we've all yeah. done that. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. Dan made a gypsy movie. I made one. I yeah. was literally like, we turned 20 and we're like, wait, they're real? <laughs> oh, no. oh, fun story. <laughs> My mom used to, when I was like misbehaving or something, she used to say like, I'm going to sell you to them that, yeah, you know, I'm not even, and, and then <laughs> one day I was like scared cause she was mad and I went, no, please mommy, don't sell me to the jippies. Oh, <laughs> and boy. she realized I, I didn't even know what she was talking about cause I couldn't even get the name right. Yeah. You thought and there she was stopped a saying that. <laughs> I thought it was like the goblins yeah, or something. Yeah, the night breed. Yeah. yeah, like, I don't know. Hit the marker button. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll edit that out. Um, but anyways, so we knew at that point we had to, like, work harder. And Hirsch was was a bro about it. He, like, totally got the gag. Like, you could talk way more familial and, like, oh yeah, lower stakes in the terms problem, of the conversation. The problem with Hirsch was I accidentally told him the wrong deadline. I gave him a deadline. This of is a for date. Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I said it's the 26. I I didn't catch it until like the day before. I was like, hey, uh, I could have killed you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he filming um, it like he was the, at uh, while we were setting at, up? Well, yeah, it was it was like the day of. He was at New York Comic Con or something. Like he was just finishing up there, so he like he must have been tired or something. And you should have <laughs> asked him to like record his video next to like Lou Ferrigno <laughs> or like is Alan Thick long gone? Is yes. It? Okay, I couldn't uh, think of another. 2016 Al. got Alan Thick. Um, he's thick in the grave now. <laughs> um, <laughs> pause for applause. <laughs> There's no joke there. Um, but um, no, that was just a uh, that was just a thing. Like where I, I I had assured him, like, look, as long as you get it to us the morning of. Oh God. It's all good. So I, I I didn't pressure him enough. I didn't give him the right date, but it it was fine. I was able to quickly edit together the the uh, the orb effect on him at your computer while you were setting up the studio. Yeah. And I had to I basically had to do that with with all of them. I just kind of like ran out of time because I spent so much fucking time 3D animating Al Capone doing backflips. <laughs> <laughs> Some people think the Al Capone in that. So so spoilers. Uh, Al Capone shows up uh, at the end of a séance we hold in this. Um, real, real quick, Neil, when did, when did the Al Capone idea come? Was it from when I, I think it was kind of like, I need something to tie all the owls together. Wait, they're what's all the owls. in-universe okay, version? Okay. Yeah, what's yeah. the in-universe ver- like reason that, that we're gonna, that we why just happen to have these cameos? Why is this our crisis on infinite earths? <laughs> like, why is this? <laughs> and I realized like, well, we, I, I think we'd already thought like, oh, a seance would be a fun like way to do this cameo. We could have made it a short New Kids on the Rock episode yeah. where we have a seance for Al Capone. Uh-huh. But but uh, some people think that the Al Capone joke is a play on Al AI. Al AI. No, that's not even an intentional thing. It's like telemark. You use like telemarketer software to generate his voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that really AI? I, like, I mean, it was a neural network voice generator thing, but I, I spent a while looking for like, what is the text to speech uh, website that will give me st- like the voices for free and has like a bunch of different voices I can pick from. So I can pick something that at least kind of sounds like a tough guy. <laughs> and I just, I don't even remember the website. Computer, I find give something. me Italian. Yeah. But it, I had to like, you know, like manually type in like the pronunciations of like, he, uh, like, what am I doing here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, phonetic. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it was inspired by a joke on, um, on cinema at the cinema. Um, the pilgrims, not the pilgrims. Um, but it was a, uh, a bit where um, Tim Heidecker like 
digitally brings his dead son back to life for one night. It's a really fucking funny clip. Uh, look it up. It's from one of their Oscar specials, but his like, it's like a poser model walks out and says like, dad, I miss you. I like, I'm a successful model now. And like, it's just bad CGI. And then his clothes disappear for like one shot. And then they come back. <laughs> it's, it's like the funniest goddamn thing. So I just like, that's just intrinsically funny. A uh, funny way to bring back a dead person is just just have them CGI, and nobody's going to call attention to so, it. So we we got all the cameos ready for the Al Capone seance. We had mm -hmm. the CGI Al Capone using some combination of like, was it Cinema 4D Blender? I used um, 3D Studio uh, Max. I used Blender to render it, yeah. um, and to kind of like assemble the animations, and I used like a a dis a, a defunct adobe product called fuse that you can yep. use to like make a character yeah. to generate a character and like choose clothes it was like on it was for free on steam for some reason that was the <laughs> only way to get this software then i loaded that into uh because i have the creative suite yeah. i could use their like weird thing that automatically rigs the model it's like a library of pre-baked moves yeah like, and i and i like that's why he does all these weird like just animations that don't match what he's saying he looks like an npc mm -hmm. from a mid-gen dreamcast it's game. exactly yeah. what i wanted and i managed to get it to work in, in blender i i i had to relearn a bunch of <laughs> shit in blender and you that. you asked me like so how does he leave and i was like oh, you should like backflip up mm -hmm. like spider-man <laughs> you you cut it from the final from the thing you cut away but the the original joke there was he does a backflip back up to heaven. Then there's like a beat and then you just see his body land on the, like the, like the cement floor in the background. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the final thing, but I'll, I don't know. I'll put it up somewhere. Cause, uh, it's funny. It is funny, but I, I, I see why like it works better if he just goes down. Well, I was so nervous live cutting that, oh, that yeah. things were going to linger too long mm -hmm. or we'd have like mm -hmm. frozen frames of people. Corey, um, did any of us tell you what happened with shooting Dan and how we oh were going to do that for the show? Uh, yes, you did. You told me that you were trying to do actual, like an actual physical blood. Kind of, kind of like a poor man's squib. Yeah. Yeah. But, and but I, I call it a blood pump when you take an old like insecticide pump and you clean it out and you hook up a regular piece of garden hose to it and you fill the garden hose up with fake blood. You then pump up the blood pump as much as you can, like a super soaker. Uh, you run the hose up someone's clothes and then you pull the trigger and it makes the blood explode out. Uh, Ryan, Neil and I, we've done it in a bunch of movies. Ryan and I did a lot of that. <laughs> we were like 18, 19. We were like, yeah, we'll just do that again. So Dan went out mm -hmm. and bought two shirts, two coats to like fake the, the effect. So we could, he could get covered in fake blood and then immediately change into the other costume. We went to do it and we haven't done it in like 18, 19 years or something. Yeah. Like seriously. Like and the clock long. is running out. No, maybe not that long. When do we make Bigfoot Begins? 2008. Jeez. Yeah. So that's 16 years ago. Was I think the last time we did it? Yeah, we, we watched that also before we did the thing. It's like, it, it looks look, good. It work. looks good. It <laughs> looks good. And I, of course, we've gotten better as filmmakers. How could we mess this up? <laughs> we put like maybe a quarter of a cup of blood in the the the, the tubing. We ran it up Dan's shirt. We had like sound blankets ready for Dan to like fall over on when he got shot. Ryan pumped it up like a soldier. I got the camera ready, and it was like the old days. I'm like, okay, Ryan, and action. And Ryan pulled the trigger for the air to release and push the blood up and like nothing came out. It ruined the shirt. So that was our one take. And we were like, ah, shit. Well, we we were out of time. The show starts in like 40 minutes. Neil, go whip up some crappy thing in After Effects really quick. Mm -hmm. As you were doing that, uh, Ryan and I were walking out back to like get rid of the bloody clothing and throw it in the trash. And Max heard me say this as I walked out of the house. I go, you know what? Come to think of it, Ryan, when we used to do this 15, 20 years ago, we used like a pint of blood. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard Max laughing his ass off in my house. <laughs> I think it would work if you stuffed like a bit of a sponge, sponge That's what we used there. to do. Yeah, just so you only have to fill up like the top like six inches or so. We fucked it up. Like, oh, well. But what I ended up doing was I, like, because I had so little time, I, you, you said like, hey, I got a bunch of like, digital squibs i can give you on green screen you like gave me you like found the file in your archives and I have it was tons like, of old stock footage. it was just like a quick time file that just didn't work at all in after effects i'm just like i can't use this file well, after effects wouldn't even open it no no <laughs> wouldn't work so cool, i, I quick very time. quickly just ran over to like youtube and wrote like uh blood squib green screen I apologize to whoever I stole it from. I i we can have a credit later maybe but <laughs> <laughs> you know you know what we should do um 
we should take the Al Capone thing that got cut short, mm-hmm. and we should take the raw footage of you getting shot, and we should just put it up on the um the Patreon. Oh yeah, like for free, for people can just watch it there. But that's like a good place for it to live. Yeah, right. Um, but yes, you missed out on that adventure, Corey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was stressful. <laughs> oh, and yeah, and I kept rendering out the clips, and they like weren't compatible with your the hyperdeck. Yeah, with the hyperdeck. The Hyperdeck uh, is a playback device that we use for playing back B-roll and doing graphics, and it's extremely picky because it tries to emulate the workflow of tape-based playback. So you have to make sure everything you put on it has the exact this was, yeah. same like m- like like forensic level specifications. Like they have to be the same bit rate, the same bit depth. They have to have the same audio channels. Like you can't give it a mono uh, uh, audio file and then a stereo one. It just won't Whoa. play. It just won't do it. And it's, it, this is frankly the most, this is the best one of these I've used though. Like, I swear to God, I stand by the hyperdeck. It's, it's, oh it, yeah. It's yeah, a good discipline to learn. Was it the bones episode? One of the episodes, like we couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. It kept it. going wrong because, um, the intro for the, for the video game police, I used a variable bit rate to export it from after effects. Mm. So it would start working on the hyperdeck. In some episodes, it would be fine. And in other episodes, yeah. something would happen. Some saturation would hit where the data was being read off the card too fast or whatever. And it would go, nope, I'm not doing this. That was the episode I thought your head was going to explode. It was bumming me out because the Bones episode's great. <laughs> You're like, I don't know why this isn't working. I don't know why this isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> with OBS, which we can use, you can use OBS with an ATEM. You can use that yeah. for your graphics mm-hmm. levels thing. And uh, that's basically if you're doing the mic like, on the fly, mm-hmm. it is definitely more malleable. The doing the premeditated, like everything's on the SD card, it does force you into the discipline of like, what is my run of show? Yeah. What am I doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which it's, it's, it's apples and oranges. Like the other, the other thing with the, the black magic though, is that when you're using the ATEM and you're triggering it from, it's the best, the ATEM, it's picking Talking. the, it's picking the file and playing it at the yeah. same time. I should have mentioned this earlier when Max was asking about like the technical rundown. So the, the black magic uh, ATEM Mini Extreme, like the 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 switcher we use for the video, uh, has an Ethernet jack on it. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought this. this <laughs> <laughs> I thought we could use a little background music. I need some like you need like Breaking Bad like yeah, thinking music. Hang on. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the uh, the ATEM Mini Extreme is hooked up via the Ethernet jack mm-hmm. to a little network switch, which is hooked up to. <laughs> <laughs> which is hooked up to you've only got 20 um, seconds left so there's, yeah. a, so the net, there's a network switch that's hooked up to the video extreme you as cut the well red wire or the blue wire the uh, <laughs> hyperdeck <laughs> and uh, it's also hooked up to the actual Kevin what has been Max my house yeah. that, so it's just cans it's just cans <laughs> which is like, speed you know or oh, whatever. It's, just, Sorry. <laughs> it's just puppets that's yeah. all it is the whole show is puppets but uh, basically what happens is, is um, all these devices see each other um, over the network uh, you map them to one another so the uh, hyperdeck, which is hooked up, there's an HDMI output that mm-hmm. is hooked up to an HDMI input of the ATEM Mini Extreme. So anything you play back on the hyperdeck will play back through that source, like people will see it. But what happens is if you have a network connection going on, if you like map the IP of the hyperdeck to the ATEM and you tell it, hey, when I go to that input that the ATEM's on, say it's HDMI input eight, start playing immediately. Just don't just immediately start playing because that's what you want, right? Like, oh, I want to like see what's on that. I, I want to like see that graphic, play that graphic. Um, and what you can do is within the software end of the ATEM, you can pull up a playlist of everything that's available on the hyperdeck and you can queue it up. So at any point I could go, you know what? The next thing I want to see is this crude green screen overlay of the vampire guy from Big Bad Beetleborgs pop up. So I click that, I wait, and then when I hit eight and put eight, it not only brings up the graphic it immediately starts to play it you've been playing stupid ass music this whole time no, I, just, no way. I just triggered doug sees patty at the end of your <laughs> see it worked yeah speaking of big bad beetle Borgs, thanks to kevin now on my phone whenever i go <laughs> oh, to yeah. react to someone yeah how the fuck did you do that message, kevin it's on my fucking phone too flabber is the last option and it's that pops so up. big <laughs> it's huge yeah, it's gigantic it's still the biggest, screen kevin biggest. how'd you hack our phones i didn't build the fucking thing you I, did so, something <laughs> so yeah for some reason android lets you through modern sms technology create custom emojis and i made one out of flabber and I apologize for nothing. <laughs> you got Flabber and you got Darkman. 
you sent me the dark man a lot i haven't seen that i haven't i, have I don't have the dark, dark man, man so. i wish i had dark man it's yeah. a flabber hey you got, we could watch dark man after this <laughs> dark man 2 die dark man dark man 3 no, no dark, dark man 2 is return of durant dark man 3 is die dark man die yeah <laughs> Alliteration. I love it. All right. Uh, anything else we want to cover when it comes to the live show stuff? I, I know I've, I've hogged the, the the spotlight talking about the tech stuff, but um, do we want to make any promises about future shows we want to do? I know we're going to try and do a stream next week on Nicktoon games. We've we've got a lot of polite pressure from our friends to do more of the live stuff. Our mm-hmm. friends really like the live stuff. Everyone has finally figured out that uh, it's we fun. should be encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> well i think we, we've had projects that like when we did computer fighters there was a moment we got eight months into making that and ming one time we were like it was like at a barbecue or something and ming like she didn't corner me but she kind of like started a conversation with me about one thing and then it quickly became so uh when are you gonna finish computer fighters and mm. like i mean and it was clear like she wanted she was like kevin you, you this this can't be a year you cannot spend a year working on the mm. the Disney Channel movie <laughs> that is computer. <laughs> it just I don't know, we just you know, we had a lot of people, a lot of locations, a lot of visual effects, and it was a casual back burner thing. But I, I think a lot of our uh, our loved ones like the the extemporaneous nature and how casual it is, and you get a lot of bang for your buck. Mm-hmm. I, I think we should do another talk show soon. Um, maybe not stream of screams because Halloween's behind us, but I, I think we should do another one. It's it's fun as fuck. Like a Christmas thing seems. Yeah. I mean, Santa could show up on a video game police. Don't spoil it. I, mean, yeah. I, I said could. I said could. <laughs> could. I told you that in confidence. Yes. Oh um, well, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. You get it. Yeah, get I what get I did it, there. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you turned my sound effects down. Uh, yeah. so. Asshole. Uh, just, there we go. I just picked up on. Yeah. 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 Took what you're putting down. Yeah. He played Santa yeah, he did. several times. He did. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, that's kind of, this is, is like most popular role is Santa Claus at this point. Buzz. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. Come on. Yeah. Okay, I guess that's his. No, that's I, his I believe Chris Evans has taken the mantle of Buzz Lightyear. That's very true. <laughs> Everyone's favorite version of him. Yeah. <laughs> well, should we move over to the, the patron questions? You did that, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's get some questions from patrons. It'll be real great. <laughs> like we oh, did to Dan got thing. shot again. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> uh, every episode of Guaranteed Audio, we take questions from patrons over at guaranteedvideo.com, and this episode is no different. Life is boring. Time is a flat circle. Uh, so yeah, we got questions here from folks over at guaranteedvideo.com. Uh, I let them know what we were going to talk about, and hopefully their questions are predicated on the thesis of the show. I don't know. No, so that's, that's not a good sound effect for that. Uh, Shah asks, is there any part about doing live shows that's more difficult than others? For example, like lights and sound. Is there something that you have to absolutely make sure you don't mess up? Yes, sound is much, much harder than <laughs> I thought it was going to be. Because sound, when it comes to our like short films and podcasts, that's we've got that down. You know, like we have a few different ways to like capture it and improve it. We do. We definitely do some ADR to fix stuff later, but it comes to a live show. You, you just you can't fuck around. It's it's most of the experience. Let's be honest. We've it, had similar troubles, though, doing pre tape stuff like uh, Ernest yeah. Roulette. It's kind of the same deal. It's, uh, if we don't have someone on board like Corey to wear the headphones and make sure that we're not screwing it up. We've, yeah. Well, yeah. it's tricky because like I feel like when you're doing something like or even pre taped like mm-hmm. if there's an issue with the lighting you notice it immediately. Right. There's an issue with the camera. Like you, we have a, a multi, multi um, track um, video going. Mm-hmm. So like if a camera dies, we're well aware of it pretty quickly. Um, if mean, someone, there, there were maybe multiple earnest episodes. Oh, though, that's where true. One of the cameras died and we just like, if you notice it, we're not yeah. at a certain angle. There's a yeah. whole earnest episode where a light dies. And you yeah, yeah, but it looks slowly, slowly died. It was like linear. <laughs> the light, based yeah. on how and I, the battery was dying. I edited it, it with, cr- with crossfades to make it look like we were just talking into the night because it was like a really boring deliberation. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I just yeah, made lemonade from that. But yeah, um, Perfect. We also had that happen on the um, stand episode of uh, the Vidnight Society. Yeah. You and I reviewed an REM video and our key light started to dim. Mm-hmm. So you, I pointed it out and you go, well, that means it's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in a weird way, having... Um, sound. It's sound. It and is the answer sound, is sound. But at, at, at the very least, we 
we can like rely on the chat to say like, hey, is this person's voice too loud? Is this person's well, voice we, too loud? Well, we did like five episodes without a compressor because we're dumbasses. Well, now we have one. <laughs> it's just a bad one. Yeah, baby. <laughs> um, let's see. Martin Hay asks all five of us, as someone who doesn't live in the United States, can you tell me what is the bigger holiday, Thanksgiving or Christmas? <laughs> Christmas. 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 This is yeah. two goddamn months now, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Thanksgiving is just part of Christmas now. Yeah. For a hundred percent. It's shopping for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love Thanksgiving. Uh, I, lo- yeah. I love cooking. I love making desserts. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I love the, the, um, the meaning of it, the history of it. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Brygog asks... Nothing sad. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Brygog asks, what video editing and music programs do you use? Which are the best you've used? So we use the Adobe Creative Suite like everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, Some esoteric stuff that's like a little off the beaten path. Um, Monkey Jam, I I haven't used it in a long time, but Ryan got got me using Monkey Jam back in college for uh, stop motion animation. (laughs) And I used it a few times for like old visual effects stuff. It's been a long time since I used Monkey Jam, but I like- Why are you bringing it up? Well, I'm just trying to think of like a a fun answer here. Like what's like- Audacity? (laughs) I use um, Audition. Actually, no. I, I recently, That's a boring. Corey, you've got a good one. What's a good like music what? editor? Like a good like what's some music editing software you like to use? Uh, I use Sonar. Sonar? Yeah. Is it's, that like the most common one, or is it? High cool? five. Uh, Wait, no, it's, it's like Cakewalk. It's Cakewalk now. Or yeah, I remember when they, it was Sonar though. Yeah, it was yeah. Sonar. Yeah. So I'm I'm still running a P a Windows Seven PC from like 2011 or 2010. I think I bought it. Mm-hmm. Um and. The version of Sonar I'm running, Sonar like got sold to Gibson and then Gibson like tanked remember, it yeah. and then it got picked up by Band Labs. Band Lab and it's like kind of free now. It's, it's like it was free for like a couple of years and now I think they're doing a subscription based thing on it. It's like some additional thing. I, yeah. I'm not sure, but um, I like are you running like Sonar 8.5 or something? I think so. Yeah. yeah it's like, like yeah. yeah, yeah, like. I, I had the same issue because, like, you have all your plugins and stuff. Yes. There's plugins that went away that don't right, work anymore, right. like synths and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I'm ter- – I think I was talking to Kevin about this the other day because I was like, I really want to learn more of the video editing and more of, like, some of, like, the like the 3D stuff that, like, you've been playing with, like, the, the music video that we're making. Um, but the, I, cannot, I cannot wait for that to come out. But the PC that I have, I'm like, I, I need a new PC, but if I – upgrade to windows 10 or windows 11 i'm not going to be able to run the sonar 8.5 i have anymore and like all of my plugins and like all mm-hmm. that, that stuff's always tricky i, I had yeah. to get a copy of adobe encore a couple of years ago to master a blu-ray because mm-hmm. it was like kind of like the best cons- prosumer program for that mm-hmm. and they didn't make adobe didn't make it anymore so i had to like find a way to like pirate it and it wouldn't run on my desktop because of like the the, the web connectivity of, of windows yeah. 10 or whatever yeah. it was at the time so i had to take a laptop disable the network on it and i had to do all these like old school like key gen like mm. like like break the, what, what's uh, uh what, what's the term not just crack but i guess crack the program crack. Yeah. yeah crack like and i hadn't done that in a long time you, <laughs> you know, had to crack. do crack yeah. we know, you know we all know it we love it <laughs> um what about uh okay, rodney dangerfield uh, uh, max like do you like mm-hmm. when you've made your like web content was it mostly a premiere thing for you or yeah premiere yeah yeah what about you, Dan? Like, like when you, yeah, Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop. What do you use for streaming though? When like you're doing your big shows? Oh, uh, OBS. OBS. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I, I I like OBS a lot. Um, OBS is great. OBS is cool. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, we yeah, we use the uh, Adobe stuff. Premiere. How are you feeling about Premiere these days, Kevin? Like everybody else, uh, I wish I could just have bought it in 2019 for like a thousand well, bucks aside and, aside from the money though like as a as software i think that adobe's audio enhancement tool is incredible mm-hmm. and i don't say that lightly um i was just raised to think that you got to get audio right the first time and you can't fix it later i mean within reason you can eq mm. and phase cancel and do stuff like that but um I think they call it Adobe Podcast Enhance. It's incredible. I try not to let it make me lazy, but what you can do is you can upload any spoken word to it and it can make it sound like it's recorded like 
through a proper microphone at the right distance. And it sounds like a magic trick because it is. It, it does exactly what it purports to. Mm. I mean, that's not even really a Premiere thing, but it is built into Premiere now. They have some new bells and whistles, but for the most part, I just wish it ran more efficiently. That I, I mean, that sounds it's the same song and dance everyone puts out there about all software they use. Like I just want it to run more efficiently. Mm. I just want it to be leaner. Just bug test, bug test, bug test. I'm okay with it. I have been playing around with resolve a little bit just because mm-hmm. I feel like I should learn a second one again. I haven't really used a non Adobe premiere editing NLE. That's the thing. Time. I used to uh, run Vegas sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I was more of a Vegas guy than a premiere guy for a Back while. Old days. Well, cause I had a crappy computer and like <laughs> I didn't have like a good video card and Vegas didn't really take advantage of video card acceleration. It was all just CPU bound. And I had a good CPU in my old computer when I was like 18. There are some ways based on my memories of Vegas that I, I preferred it to premiere Premiere, I, I I find still has like weird clunky, just like uh, language, uh, language, or just like the way the tracks work and yes. stuff. Like it just doesn't feel modern. You have to just learn their way of doing yeah. it. It's yeah. like Photoshop. Seven eight years ago, I would ask you or Emmy, like, how do I do this in Photoshop? Mm-hmm. I can't articulate it into a Google search. And you'd show me, and I would be like, how am I supposed to learn how to do that on my own? You're like, you don't. It's a secret handshake. Yeah, like everything in Photoshop is a mm-hmm. secret handshake. Um, but like all, all that to all that is to say. Uh, like all the awkward things I, uh, I find about Premiere, I think After Effects rules. It's like, I think it's like by far the best thing that Adobe has. Mm. Um, and I kind of wish that they would just get rid of Premiere and just modify After Effects a little bit so it can do more like track based editing because the way, I don't know, just like the, um, the, the way it stacks effects and layers and can, uh, and the way pre comps work is just like so much smoother. It's, they're different beasts, um, they are, which is like, obvious to yeah. say, but like when it comes to like video editing, mm-hmm. what I'm usually trying to do in a video editor is very dissimilar yeah. to what I'm doing in After Effects because you can edit in After Effects. I've seen people do it. Like I've seen music videos edited in After Effects where like the, the music video never leaves After Effects. And I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> well, that's I, what I'm saying is like if they could just make it so like you have like the tracks and you can re- you can put different clips on yeah. on the same track. In, um, in After Effects or Premiere? In After Effects. Yeah. I think that that's like, I wouldn't need Premiere. I, they anymore. know that. They know They know that. Yeah. That's the walled <laughs> garden. It just feels like they're stuck with certain things they're never going to refresh or clean up. And they just kind of like find new coats of paint every 12 months. Like, well, now the interface looks like this. It's better, right? Mm. <laughs> like the shortcut's over here now. I, I don't know. It, what I'm, if we broke up Monopoly? Whoa! <laughs> what, are you, what, what are you like, Bill Clinton? What is this, 1996? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Neil, the sound we, effects from 1996. We broke up one monopoly. We broke up. We kind of broke up Microsoft a little bit in like 1999, and we've just been resting on our lawyer, lawyer, lawyer lawyers. Yeah. I looked at you and said lawyers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, Neil, what do you what do you use these days for audio DAW? For I use uh, Cakewalk. Oh, okay. Yeah. The 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 Band Labs. Band Labs Cakewalk. It cool. does everything I want, and I can op- I can open my old Sonar stuff in it. Okay. Um, and uh, it just works. It does everything I need it to do, mm. and I think it's underrated. Cool. Yeah. Cool. 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 Elbow uh, Elbow Davy's got a question. Yeah. Actually, one one oh, sorry, last sorry. piece of software. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like a total side thing, but you mentioned mm-hmm. Audacity earlier. Yep. Uh, I hate Audacity. I use it sometimes <laughs> if I just don't have Audition. You, Audition takes too long to ro- open. You, There's you, something called OSAN Audio mm. that is just, it, it's just like a smoother freeware Corey, thing. It's the equivalent of, uh, uh, yeah, Audacity. Neil, C- Corey, he has to watch Rap God. You guys have to watch Rap God. Uh, r- sorry, Rap World, because mm-hmm. th- they keep hyping up this guy who's like their like producer. Their like beat their, maker, yeah. Their beat maker. And like five, six minutes into the movie, you see his machine and it's like an old like windows XP machine <laughs> yeah. that you can't put like a book on because it'll like get in the way of like the fan intake and you see his software and it's just audacity. <laughs> <laughs> it's all he's got is audacity. Oh, not even fruity loops. I'm sorry to keep spoiling jokes for this. Oh, that's okay. You yeah, gotta yeah, watch yeah, check it. Check it out. Like the vibe you're, you're putting down. It's great. I got, okay. One more question. Elbow Davy asks a good one. We got a lot of questions, but I'm trying to stick to ones that we could all like chime in on. Elbow Davy uh, asks, I know you've been on YouTube forever. Do you remember when live streams first became a thing and was it a big deal? What's, I guess, yeah, what's everyone's like first mental purchase when it comes to streaming, like live stream? Do you remember like watching early live streams? Do you remember when it started happening? 
There were, yeah, I remember there was like dedicated sites. Like, mm. yeah. oh, you, you can't do that on YouTube. That's not for live video. That's for, it was you just know. like Twitch was big before YouTube had live streaming. Yeah, but there was like but Justin.tv even, before. You had, had to build yeah. You had to build it like Giant Bomb. They had to like build like a, like a specific studio in order to do this and like get their own servers. They didn't want any of their content to be on third party platforms. They want to control over it. They resisted YouTube for a long time mm -hmm. and they would do like these live shows called Unprofessional Fridays, yep. TNT, that were like what, what we kind of do with video game police, uh, but they were doing this in like 2007 and eight or whatever. Mm -hmm. so that, yeah, it, that stuff rules. Like I, I, I love going back and I've, I've like tried to get all of you at different points to watch old giant bomb. Like, isn't this the best? <laughs> Is this like the best thing you've ever seen? <laughs> like, I don't like, think it was like mind blowing for any of us because it was just like, oh, it's like a, a TV show that just kind of shows up on its own website. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah that, that's kind of how I, I think we all encountered it and felt about it at the time. I, sure. th I think for me, like one that's just coming to mind is like when it got to weird minutia being streamed. Like just things that like not like a video game stream, not like a TV show, just someone doing a thing. Someone sleeping. Someone sleeping. And the one that's coming to mind, it's a, it's a weird one. It was back during the 2013, the Boston. So a little bit late. Streaming is already a thing at this point for not as big as it is now. Yeah. But the Boston Marathon bombing, mm. there was this guy who was just streaming a police scanner. Yeah. Just streaming a police scanner. And I knew this guy actually too. Mm. Just streaming that, watching that. And he didn't add any commentary to it. It was just a video of his police box. As you heard people like hunting down these these terrorists. And oh, like, like when they were capturing them. And yeah, stuff. I and heard I, the like the arrest happen I, I was, over that stream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was Live. I was not watching that stream, but I was like literally listening to the actual. I was doing what that guy was Same. doing. I was listening to the the police scanner as it happened. Yeah, I, I was listening crazy to, stuff. I was Absolutely living in crazy. Waltham at the time. I was one town over. Oh my god, where yeah. it was happening. Yeah. But yeah, I, just, I had friends who had to hide in their basement. Like, jeez. Mm. Oh, boy. I mean, yeah, that was scary. And I don't mean to bring the mood. Into that. <laughs> but it was just like that kind of thing where it's just like, oh, people can do something like that. Yep. And people will watch it. <laughs> I mean, that was, I think, a, a different cultural touch point. But, you know, yeah. you have people who. Yeah. Point, sleep. I, I can kind of remember like when um, yeah, Twitch was getting big and people were starting to use it for things that weren't video games. And. Like they were, they were having like a, um, I felt like there was a community crisis over it. They're like, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There are people out there who are just like, you can't, you can't stream this. You can't stream it. Just a girl talking to people. That's where. And so they created like a, a separate mm. channel for Twitch called like IRL, which was just for hangouts for a bit. I, I remember yeah. watching Joe Cononis, friend of a bunch of us. Uh, he was one of the first people I watched streaming, just him drawing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Just like, Oh, this is, this is like calming. Like I like just having it on in the background while I was like editing. Like it was just like, it felt like I was in like the world's coolest, like coffee shop. Like, oh yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Diesel. In <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what <laughs> band it was, but I remember pretty early on watching a band like streaming a, um, like an album launch type of deal. Like they were just playing the, mm. the CD sure. and they were just like hanging out in a room and like chatting cool. while like the CD was like kind of like playing like launch party type of deal. One of the first times I tried video game streaming um, was uh, I played Ms. Pac-Man, uh, but I set it to be really slow motion and to have like a lot of like video trails and stuff. Cool. Uh, and and like I routed the audio so that it was all like really reverbed. Um, so just like an extremely slow version of Ms. Pac-Man where because like the pacing of the game is so different you can't really rely on your intuition and it kind of stays just as hard because you're trying to like stay ahead of the ghosts mm. but just be, you just like forget what you're doing <laughs> and i was playing with one hand and like playing a synthesizer with my other hand cool um you should have done like an invincibility code <laughs> do those exist dan for no it was uh, really pathetic i kept losing <laughs> Dan, you're a computer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I got I got a cute early uh, streaming story. Um, uh, years ago, I wanted to watch a Bruins game, but I didn't have cable. So I hooked up my computer to my TV, and I was in a basement apartment at the time, and some friends came over to watch the game. And uh, so we were, like, you know, doing a pirated stream of this NHL game, and uh, it looked great. It was high def. It, frankly, looked better than most broadcasts I'd seen. It was, like, a really clean 1080 60 stream and the funny thing that happened was 
uh, every now and then I'd hear my upstairs neighbor freak the hell out. And three seconds later, someone would score a goal because they were watching it on cable. Mm. So it was like spoiling the game. And at first it was funny. Oh, this was your like nightmare neighbor too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like by like the third goal, I was like, oh, there's like, it's just not <laughs> exciting to watch a game when three seconds before every goal, it's like, hey, hey, someone's going to score. Like, hey, oh, yeah. <laughs> all the bullets out of the gun. Your like drunk upstairs neighbor is a precog apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's from a minority report. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. What was I going to say? Um, I, I, I remember like really early days before video streaming, it was okay to do audio only streaming and people would, there was like live 365.com yeah. and people would play DJ and they would play copyrighted music. Yeah. And you can't do that now. I, I feel like mm. there, maybe there's some way to do it, but I don't know if there's an audience for people who are just going to listen. If like you play music for people and they listen. Like, some people do it on Discord. I'm in a Discord where oh, someone's yeah, yeah. like, hey, I'm doing a DJ set like every yeah, Monday. Like, yeah, like remix DJ stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I mean, I guess you could do it with just you here's know a bunch of songs. I will. Okay. <laughs> I still, I, I know this will never happen, but um, I, I really like the... Uh, the Netflix, like Amazon Prime Video, like anything that enables like watch parties over the internet, mm. COVID like I, era stuff. Y- yeah, yeah, like but like that stuff. I, I, the Xbox 360 did it. Where say Dan and I both had an Xbox 360, and we jumped on Netflix. We could like enter a party. I think mm. was it 360 that I think did? 360 did that. Yeah, and like you, it would just automatically sync you to watch the thing together. And like prior to that, like my buddy Steve Bailey and I used to do that. Like we would be on aim. I swear to God, we used to do this. We would go on aim and we'd like alt tab over to like some like website that had like pirated episodes of like, Hey Arnold or something. Mm -hmm. And we'd like leave them on and we'd be talking on aim while the thing went. It was, it was was fun to do, but Mm -hmm. I wish it was easier to do that because it's not as easily accessible to do that. Like there are watch party browser plugins and things like that. Tricky. Elise and I were doing that during COVID. We had me and Elise were in Massachusetts and then we had a, a, a couple friends that lived in Alaska and we would sync up watching movies at the same time, typically bad movies. We refer to it as like bad movie Monday. Yeah. I remember. That. And we would, um, uh, zo- I can't remember if we were doing zoom or Skype, but one of those, and we would like be pausing the movie and playing the movie at the same time because they weren't always on one of the, like the party platforms. Yeah. Um, but we did like 120 of them. Oh, so oh, we did wow. we did it every single Monday for like two years straight. Nice. Um, Hell yeah. Fucking... I, I did that, but like twice. Yeah. I think we watched Shh. Terminator. Uh, I watched Terminator a... 2, actually. Judgment Day? Yeah. yeah. Judgment that one. Day. <laughs> no, we, other like, Terminator yeah. 2. <laughs> it was good. We watched it with someone. I think we watched both of them and both we watched Terminator it. movies. <laughs> Both Terminator movies, <laughs> uh, but one of our friends hadn't seen either of them, so that was like a fun way to do it. And like, uh, I, I remember she like watched the first one. And she's like, "I thought Arnold was a a good guy, but I guess I just got that wrong." And then she got to have the same exact experience I, again in the second movie. I awesome. love showing people Terminator one and two for the first time, and I've gone to do it a few times in mm-hmm. my life. And there's always that moment where if, if you just don't tell them, mm-hmm. the second movie it's so weird because it's I, I feel like there was an attempt in the first five, 10 minutes of Terminator two to kind of keep it guarded. Like, yeah. mm. wait, just wait, just wait. <laughs> but you're watching it and you're like, they're playing bad guy music when the T 1000 shows up. Yeah. Like, it's not like it's her- it can't be bad. <laughs> like, it's slow. like when you're watching like child's play, it's like, I don't know if the doll's really alive or not. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to end one thought I had about the Terminator movies recently, which was, you know how like star Wars used to just be called star Wars. And then they change it to new hope mm-hmm. because they realize they could milk it. They make a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can't just call it star Wars because they're all I star do. Wars. Yeah. yeah. How funny would it be if like Orion or Corelco, whoever, I think it was Orion, whoever owned the first Terminator movie rebranded it. Terminator one. <laughs> 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 Numeral one. <laughs> Terminator one. <laughs> Because there's only one of them. No, because like I know, I know. I'm it's like when you call, like it's like if someone said, "Hey, let's watch Aliens one." You know, yeah. <laughs> you could just see your brain slipping into thinking that. I don't know. All right, that that had nothing to do with the last question. I just thought it was funny. Mm. This has been a good episode. I will cut out a lot of my rambling in the first forty minutes, as per usual. Max, Corey, Dan, Neil, thank you for coming to my house. Ryan Murphy. 
Well, thank you for joining us for this episode, this uh, behind the scenes episode of Guaranteed Audio. We'll be back soon with live streams, maybe a short film again someday, and more guaranteed uh, content. What sound effect do we end the show on? A fart. Chicago. Fart one, two, or three? Three. Oh, surprise me. Three. Three. One. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's be like that scene in Terminator okay. 2. We're going to turn the key at the same okay. time. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh-huh.